everybody. Welcome back to a re- the first regular episode of the show we've had since ever, yeah, forever. No, it's been like it's been like over a week, week and a half. Uh, we were in E three. We were at E three last week. We we're in Los Angeles. Were we, Nick? Well, we left you behind. Most of us. Were. Most of us were. You know uh, what? It made that better. That skit better. I thought someone was going to do a Kevin. It yeah, uh, no, we, that was. Yeah, I, I had we, thought we, about it. Uh, it was the original. It, it evolved. Yes, it did uh, evolve. It would have been better if we had it, our, our last like thing for E three content. We filmed like a shot of Brad in L A. Yeah, he, <laughs> he finally got. He, he managed to like, get there as yeah. they're pulling down you the find the turkey leg like, guy. <laughs> well, we thought about I got so many tweets about this turkey, turkey leg like guy. guy. Yeah. Jesus right? Christ! Well, it did. Look I am up. way fatter than that dude. <laughs> I didn't want to say anything. It did look a lot like you. It looked like Brad from 2010. It was it was the hair and the height, and, um, the, and the devil and, may care attitude, and the and the turkey leg. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so welcome to the show. This is obviously a four player podcast. This episode. This is officially episode 461 because we don't actually count the numbers officially. when we're in a, when we're on trips and whatnot. So, uh, this is episode 461. We have we a should, lot. We should retcon. We should go back and add up all of the shows. New 52! Ones. New 52! We'll all get new costumes and everything. We'll restart at episode one. Yeah, y'all can stop wearing yeah. the same shirt every week. Yeah. Well, I just wore I'll this because I knew Crispy was going to I'll get a this. gray shirt instead of a blue one. Oh, that's <laughs> slightly less dull. Uh, anyways, so, you know, we, we were we were in Los Angeles last week. All of our, our E3 <clears throat> podcasts are up. We are still kind of sorting through footage. Um, we have some vlogs we're going to be posting. In fact, I'm going to try and get those up tomorrow morning. Um, depending on how like this podcast goes, um, so look for those if you haven't. They're on the fr- they're on the front page. They'll, they will be on the front page of fourplayernetwork.com before they hit YouTube. Um, and uh, Brad's also put out several trailer talks. Yes, I watched. Oh, There'll I be watched. at least one more. I maybe. watched them all. So potentially three episodes of trailer talk covering nothing but games from E3. So I've uh, watched. Obviously, <laughs> obviously Brad was uh, unfortunately was unable to attend the show this year with us, but uh, he did cover his thoughts on all the stuff that was there, all the trailers and whatnot. So if you haven't yet, check out the it's check okay, though. Out the trailer talk. While I was here, I was able to, uh, Chris, could you feed my dogs? And <laughs> it was pretty good. <laughs> really? Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we'll, we'll check out the, listen, listen to the E3 podcast. We talk about a lot of stuff, including porn. Yeah. We, talk mm-hmm. we tried VR porn. porn. They emailed us. Did they again? Or did um, he just emailed me? I guess. It's because you look so enthusiastic about it. Well, that's weird, though. You didn't actually make it to the entire t- entire uh, video. Well, apparently, yeah. I stopped with like not long left. <laughs> yeah, you, you stopped, didn't get you the t-shirt out. and pin. Yeah, <laughs> you missed the best part, Nolan. <laughs> he left. You left during the best part, Nolan. Well, the thing is, <laughs> the email he sent me had that video. Oh, it did. Oh, so yeah. we can post it on the site. We could. That's why he he sent us the <laughs> videos both. Not safe for work and safe for work versions. Wait, what's the safe for work version? Just, Everything just, is no new. Have you ever seen those those sites where it's like safe? It, the, it's a Twitter it's account, the safe for work porn, between. where they take like actual porn scenes, but they like they but like dr- corn. They, oh, they, they draw, draw stuff over it. Room, so it's like like two maracas. Oh, okay. yeah. The fucking those bongos and shit. And she's like eating corn <laughs> instead of like. My favorite one is <laughs> thanks, Chris. God <laughs> damn it. <laughs> okay. uh, so yeah, we. So if you want to hear our thoughts about that check out the podcast they are all available you can also take take note if you haven't yet we launched a brand new four player site fourplayernetwork.com the site's shiny and new you can check it out right now uh we're still making small improvements to it and tweaking it and stuff like that but for the most part it's live check it out by the way nick i'm nolan headstrom oh fuck (laughs) and i'm brad simons yeah yeah crispy's here too hmm yeah hey i'm here too you know the, the and post the e- rest here and on and the I'm on the rest. Yes. I, I'm also, I'm also your host and Nick Henderson. Your, your your terrible host Nick Henderson who forgot to introduce everybody. Um, you know this is actually right this after E3 because you know typically E3 like part of their application process when you're a podcast they say make sure you you link you send us links for your podcast where you introduce the people in the first thirty seconds right. Yeah. So just blew E3's right over. by that. E3's <laughs> over so I'm just like. Fuck it. Fuck it. We don't. We, we don't need. We don't need to introduce ourselves for at least another thirty podcasts. Yes, exactly. Uh, so yeah, maybe I'll maybe we'll do it better next week. <laughs> Fuck uh, it. Before we get into anything, I just want to really quickly. There's a couple little things I want to cover. Uh, one, starting next week, the podcast is on a new night. We've been kind of waiting to see how everything falls with you know. Brad's got a new job, 
and we've been waiting to see how everything kind of falls into place, scheduling-wise. And we finally have it. Thursday nights. Same time, 8 p.m. Oh, that's not going to work for me. God! You can't do that to me, Crispy. (laughs) Thursday night, starting next week, Thursday, which is actually my birthday, I think. Is it? Yeah. Jeez, full of yourself much? Yeah. Hey, you think I want to be here doing a podcast on my birthday? Yeah. Uh, yes, next Thursday is your birthday. Wonderful. Let's make sure we don't have to work Friday, and then we can get fucking twisted. Oh, God. On the Someone podcast. said, Tuesday? Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> Thursday. Thursday nights, which is actually great for us. <laughs> Apparently, Nyan Man's Maru has only been watching the podcast for the last month and a half or something. <laughs> yeah, we've only been doing it on Fridays for... About a month and a half, like you said. Just wait to see We always knew out. it was temporary. It was always temporary, but Thursday night starting at 8 p.m. we'll be doing the podcast going forward, which is actually great for us because Tuesday is when new games release mm-hmm. all the time. Mm-hmm. And like, all they the sometimes time, come out on Fridays. 90% of the time like, they come out on Tuesdays. Eh, 85%. 80%, whatever. Point is, there's a lot of time when a brand new game comes out and we would love to be playing it. But we're here, and we'd love to be able to, be able to talk about it on the show, but we can't. We have to usually wait an entire week before yeah. we can talk about it. So now we can actually squeeze in some time with new games and talk about them while they're still fresh, like really fresh. No, no more of these Tuesdays where, oh, new so-and-so came out. I played five minutes of it. It's, uh, it's just pretty good so far. <laughs> exactly. Um, Fuck that. So that's cool. So starting next next Thursday, we'll be doing... Are we just are you killing a bug? Yes. Okay. There's a bug? Where? <laughs> oh, God. Oh, God. Um, I was joking. Oh, wait. Hold on. I forgot. I got this for you, Brad. What is oh. Oh, my God. I forgot oh, about that. Samus. Oh, okay. Yeah. Nolan? It's me. an original piece of art. For me, three, I presume. Uh, no, no, it was actually it, from uh, the Button Mash. Shop. The, uh, the, uh, the arcade place we went at for our community meetup, they had a like a shop like adjacent to it. You know, it's it's funny, Brad. The, it's first... the, only, the only Samus I'm getting all year. The first... <laughs> the first E3 that you didn't go to, and we are, uh, and we actually did our community meetup at a different location because we, yeah. for the past seven years, we've done the the meetup at Philippe's, which is a really good sandwich shop in LA. Yeah. Um, but we decided to mix things up a little bit this year. This is also, dude, Button Mash was awesome. Yeah. This is also on uh, Chai's Chai Tai's suggestion, uh, Button Mash, which is just a, a local arcade slash eatery mm-hmm. in uh, I don't in even LA. Remember. I don't remember what it was. It was like Korean pork show. Yeah, no, we all like like got. nine out of the ten people there that got got so the same good. thing. It was a Korean pork sandwich that was goddamn delicious. It was so yeah. fucking good. I so I, I think I think you know you know unless we anticipate having a much larger group at, at any point because our you know our E3 meetups are typically pretty small. I mean, E3 is not um, open to the public. Exactly. So yeah, most people, most so people don't. It's travel pretty much to limited to anyone who happens to be in and around LA that's available at the time. Yeah. Um, so. You know, maybe we'll do that again next year. But it it, it was cool. So also thank you to anyone who uh, who came out. We had a few people that showed up for our community meetup and had dinner with us. It was good fun, and we got to play some arcade games. Uh, inclu- we we had we had one we had one guy uh, Sh- Sean was that his name? I think so. he's like he's like I'm not a chatter. I actually have a computer, but I listen to the podcast. <laughs> yeah. and yeah. I was like oh, okay. Yeah, that was, that I was, was like that's kind of cool. Was that the guy that brought his friend? Yeah. 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 Okay. Oh, that's who, who had no idea who we were? I'm yeah. pretty sure. No, they were cool. Yeah, no, yeah, they, they, were, cool. They, were, they were. Everyone that showed up was really. Cool. Did he bust out an MP3 CD player? No. <laughs> Those are the best. Uh, but yeah, well, so, so that was cool. Yeah. So, and and I'm, honestly, like I'm trying to put together a post where we post all of our pictures and whatnot. Uh, realized last night that our uh, our our image gallery feature on our website doesn't work. <laughs> nice. <laughs> That's nice. So I gotta fix it Good so before know. I can post the pictures. Yeah. So I'm I'm hoping to have that done tomorrow so I can get all these pictures up. Uh, so look for those. Um, last bit of housekeeping I wanted to cover was. Uh, we're doing a give. We're doing monthly giveaways now. This is a new thing we start. We we la- announced when we launched a new website before E3. We're doing monthly giveaways, video game giveaways for you guys out there, uh, and we're we're gonna do one every single month. All you have to do to win the game that we're doing that month is help us um, promote our podcast, show a little bit of interaction with the show. Um, you can find all the rules on the site at fourplayernetwork.com. This month we're giving away a copy of Mirror's Edge Catalyst. Hmm. Uh, which you I'll- should make that a permanent page on the site. It is. Oh, okay. I have a permanent page, and I also made a post. What is it called? Uh, fourplayernetwork.com slash giveaways. Oh, well, there you go. That's what I was, gonna, that's, I, I was gonna. If that wasn't what it was, that's what I was gonna suggest. But you got it, Nick. Yeah. So, yeah. Uh, so yeah, there's a permanent page. I also have a, a post up that goes into detail about what game we're actually giving away that month. Um, but yeah, you can check out. Oh, 
What? 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 No, never mind. Oh God damn you! Um, but yeah, so it will announce the winner of this of the first month of this month's um, giveaway on the next podcast. All you have to do is either retweet the show when we post it, because every time I post the podcast, um, the audio podcast, but this one you're listening to right now, when it goes up on tw- on the site, I'll tweet it out. Mm-hmm. And if you retweet that, you're entered. Mm-hmm. If you write a, we have a quick read uh, section on our site now, so if you have a, any opinions you want to share, write a short article. We're looking, we're literally looking for things under, f- articles under 500 words. If you just have something that's on your mind, video game related, you can write about it, send it to us, and if, we, and if you send it to us, even if we don't end up featuring it on the site, We'll enter you in the drawing, and you, and you will. That's another way to enter. You can you can enter up to three times. The last way you can um, enter the giveaway is to leave a comment on the post for the podcast each week, and we will actually be going back and reading these comments. And if there's anything interesting to talk about, pulling from your comments, we will address them and bring them up at the beginning of the show. Which is kind of brings me to my next point because I do want to open the show this week with um, some comments. We had we've had four podcasts go up, or actually. Five podcasts go up since our last regular show. Correct. Damn. A lot of E3 content and a lot of stuff that we talked about on the show last time Brad was on the show. We've been busy. What are you doing over there? No, I look over there and no one's smelling his shoes. He's going crazy. It's, it's with not shoes smelly. I was curious to see if it was, but it's not. Yeah. Nolan. <laughs> Nolan, no, I'm not going to smell your shoe. I did I did wash it like a couple weeks ago, so. Oh. Oh, well, good. <laughs> so. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, we're going to go back and we're going to pull comments Jesus from the, the posts on the podcast each week. And I'll read some of them on the show at the beginning. And we'll, we'll, we'll address them if, if there's anything to say about them. Um, so the first one is from Piosht. Piosht. We can do that. Nobody else? Piosht. I don't think I've ever done it. Piosht. Piosht. Um, so he, he left a comment on our E3 Day 3 podcast where he was talking about Deus Ex Mankind Divided, which we talked Cri- about. Crispy and I played a little played. bit. Oh, yeah. Um, and he says... He's, it seems to him like this game is flying under the radar, mm-hmm. but once it's actually out, mm-hmm. it's probably going to be received well. Mm-hmm. I think and I think it was, it's just it's it's been in development for so long, and we've known about it for so long, and they made yeah. all the hype about it, and they made yeah. the augment your pre-order, which turned a bunch of people oh, off. Oh god, and I then, keep forgetting dude, about that. Yeah, it's, it's like, like yeah, they're just waiting for people to forget about. It's that. like there was a big hype train, and then the hype train like took a break for a I, while. I, I think part of it is like for me. Because I am excited about this game. Dude, that I looks was, fucking amazing. And I was also very... I realized how excited I was for it when I played it at E3. Yeah. But until you actually see it in front of you and remember how, remember exactly... Sometimes you forget how games play. Like, what's cool about... Yeah, this like, I was like, too. oh, God, I forgot how fucking good Human Revolution was. Like, yeah. Dude, the Human Revolution is yeah. great. Um, but I think part of it is when there were rumors flying around before it was announced, like, that this is coming, mm-hmm. something in my head just told me it was going to look more distinguishable from... Human Revolution. It's very like, similar. Part of it just... Yeah. Like, it's not quite as yellow, but... It's still pretty yellow. <laughs> but it's like, still pretty it's yellow. It's still pretty yellow. It's, it's, it's like... I feel like this is going to be one of those games... I mean, you may be able to tell the difference because they're on two different so platforms It's like less now. of a gold and more of an amber? Yeah. Right. <laughs> but like... like I, I have a feeling like when this game... When it all comes down to it and you look at a screenshot of these games side by side, it may actually be hard to tell them apart. Like, Maybe. it'd be hard to tell. Uh, That's Human Revolution. Like, I bet. The, the only reason that you might be able to is because this is... There's been a platform shift. We've gone from PS3 to yeah, PS4 sure. and all that stuff. Um, I just thought it was weird. I mean, it doesn't seem that different. It it, so. it, really it seems like the 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 combat's going to be substantially different, and how you interact with the world is going to be different from what they're touting. Oh well, yeah. yeah, but yeah. I really just hope you can still punch hookers. <laughs> True. Um, next one comes from Fingers King Carry. Uh, King Carry. He come. Brad's default is like just a deep voice, like. <laughs> Yeah, I don't anyway. care. So he left a comment on our E3 yeah, Day 2 better. podcast where we talked about a little game that we were all very excited about called Genital Jousting. Oh. Um, and he says, he, this is just his idea, says, wonder, I wonder if Genital Jousting will have an expansion in which they are going to add power-ups a la Mario Kart. Like, let's say, an oil slick power-up that you can <laughs> shoot out to cause the other players to spin out of control. Spin? You think you'd want to shoot something out that gets them stuck? Oil slick. That's like true. Diarrhea <laughs> More like, like oil stick, right? Yeah, yeah. because the whole game is about trying to get a... Well, it penis. depends on which what side of you it comes out, because oh, you have a butthole. If, 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 if so if it comes could, out like, the back... You, Brad, you want to see footage? How do you know if you're coming or you're going? <laughs> uh, like, what if Dang what up. if you could shoot, like, a little fucking something? Like, like Spider-Man. To make you it be yeah. like Spider-Man. And then it'll, like, web them up and, like, stick them. And then while they can't move, that's when you... Because, like, 
part of this, like your the screen in. doesn't move. You only Correct. have so much real estate. And right. you, if you have, you can have up to eight dicks on screen at once. Mm-hmm. So That's you a lot want to dicks? They're all moving around at once. I think you would want people. Dude, to Dude, what does an eight-player in... game look like by the end? Of I don't it? know. We, we didn't did. see that. The can you like? It would just four. be like a bunch of long. Can you dicks like clench around? your butthole? No, like, you is can't. Like a you can wiggle. No, you can no, no. wiggle it so it's, you can avoid. It looks hold on, hold on. So, so I have. I do have. I was able to capture some direct footage, and I have it. Twitch. Chris Davis has his band on Twitch. Uh, Wait, I mean, I don't, I don't, it doesn't oh, surprise well, Twitch, me. not on YouTube. Okay, It whatever. doesn't surprise me. It literally is a game about putting a dick in a butthole. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Are they photo real? So, so no, Have it's you not. Seen this? Hold on, I'll, 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 I had planned, I'll, I'll show you. I had planned on cropping out the audio from the podcast and putting it to the gameplay, but I guess one of our viewers did that kind of, uh-huh. but they, theirs is just a dick going in circles. Like all, the stuff I have is the, is the gameplay footage from when we were playing it. Yeah, it's. I mean, it's yeah. it's not photorealistic, but, but uh, it's, I mean, it's very obvious. They're what it definitely. Is. You know what's is. funny? So you you know the, the 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 singer from the band I like that I ran into again at mm-hmm. E3. The mm-hmm. Same guy I ran into at Pax a few years ago. Mm-hmm. The the day after I ran into him, he I found him tweeting. He's like, "Look what I found!" And it was genital jousting. Nice. And we connected again on Twitter there talking about genital jousting. Which member of the Insane Clown Posse was it? Oh God, <laughs> go fuck yourself, Brad. It was Pink. Violent J. So, uh, so the other thing to answer his question, I don't know if that's going to be it, but I don't know if he listened to that podcast. I think he was only half serious. He okay, because because just... I did bring up the fact, and I don't know if you, I, I think you listen to the podcast, Brad, but the fact that this game is going to have a single player mode, a story driven single player mode, and it is also going to have a Rocket League esque game yeah. mode. So I'm pretty excited for it. <laughs> <laughs> Needless to say, we're hopefully excited. the campaign is long and hard. Yeah. Okay. Hopefully Twitch lists the ban. Uh, has anyone here been following? I guess Bob actually played Sea of Thieves. At yes, E3. Bob did. Have yes. you been following this game at all? Well, I listen to the podcast. Well, because so Mikey JB asked. He's talking about comparing Sea of Thieves to Guns of Icarus, and he's he says, uh, Guns of Icarus. You remember mm-hmm. Guns of Icarus, right? Uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Doesn't have any uh-huh. Intra- uh-huh. infantry combat. He right. says, isn't the of Sea of Thieves just the same thing, but at sea instead of the air? Do they need to add weapon? Uh, do they need to add weapons if the main focus is just using teamwork well, to outplay the other ship? You're running around but on the ground too. You get off too. the ship, yeah, right? Yeah. You yeah. can. Because yeah. there was footage of you. You start off of the ship and then Correct. you get on the ship. Yeah. So you're like running around on an island. First it, trailer it, it, showed that. It, it every, depends. Every, yeah, it depends on what kind of like land based objectives they're gonna. Put <sighs> in the game. And that's what I talked about on the podcast. Like the only thing they showed. Uh, gameplay wise was this them on the island then they get on the ship yeah. but as I talked about on the podcast if they do add some sort of implementation up oh you go to an island and you find treasure and blah 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 you know whatever yeah. that would be more and I assume they are going to I assume it's not just it, going to be otherwise it seems ship like it, combat. Would, it would be weird if that was kind of all yeah, I don't think like. that's the case um, mm-hmm. but, but our last comment is actually going to tie into impressions because I, I do want to lead very briefly with a, a game real quick which I literally only went back and played this week because of this comment from our last show, episode 460. Yep. Mikey JB, the same guy who asked the Sea of Thieves question, said, I am loving Mirror's Edge Catalyst so far. Cue the Mirror's Edge, Mirror's Edge Catalyst footage. Please, Chris Davis. What? Um, oh. No, he wasn't. I, I, I actually went, I read this comment and I, he, okay, let me just read the comment first. He says, mm-hmm. he's a big fan of the first game. He put a bunch of hours into it. Um, and in this one, he's spending a lot of time with the time trials. Um, but he said, he, he suggested to me, he says, if you, are really in, if you really want to improve your experience, turn off all of the HUD. Interesting. He said, he's, as soon as he started the game, he turned off everything. No health, speed bar, no running vision, runner vision, no crosshair, etc. Nothing. Mm-hmm. Um, so I went back and did that last night. Mm-hmm. Because before, I, last week when I, or last show when we talked about it, I was, we were all kind of down on it a little bit. Yeah. Um, and, you know, a lot of those complaints still stand um, for me. But I turned it off, and I noticed... I was far less distracted. Mm-hmm. Like, there's not as much shit that's just pulling my attention in different ways, and I just feel like it feels way more like like a like a playground to ex- kind of explore because mm-hmm. there's not all these like icons all over the place and things how, to go look and see. How do you know where to go? Not like how to uh, get there. How do you know which direction to head? Well, literally, the only thing on, you, you can still mark on your map like a you can add a waypoint because like, you can open your map and you can see where your objectives are and you can add a waypoint so you can, and you can always see the waypoint sticking off in the distance like you'll see the oh, light okay. coming up so you can kind of see a general direction to go but as you can tell looking at the footage here like everything everything nothing's glowing red yeah which to me i think adds a lot i i played it i just kind of dicked around with it last night except right now i'm focusing on some other stuff that i'm playing but i was even kind of on the fence about whether i even wanted to go back and 
keep playing this, mm-hmm. to be honest. Um, it's just, it, but like, turning off all the HUD to me made me focus way more on what I was actually doing. Yeah, it makes you realize the city is way more white. Than- <laughs> yeah, which it sh- I, I feel like. I kind of feel like that helps. I mean, because... Mirror's Edge has always been very plain colors. That's all. That's the yeah, I say always been. The first game was like that. Yeah. It was very simple. It was always clean. It's supposed. To, what's the word? Uh, people use the word sterile a lot. When yeah. No. About definitely. This. That, that's like the the vibe that's given off from it. I mean, it was always. And the reason that was was because everything was white or yellow, and then where you needed to go or where you could go was always red. Yeah. That was what you could interact and with. And that's the biggest difference. Paint. When you turn off the HUD, you get rid of basically that crutch that tells you you can run up this wall or you can and jump so over that, this. And so that's so. something that, can you turn that off by itself? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, there's actually a separate setting. I turned yeah. off like eight different things. Yeah. Um, pretty much all I left on were subtitles and um, I think there was one other thing. And you know, it's just, it's I'm, I am thankful that they gave you the that ability. Some games don't let you do that. Turn off individual things, turn off individual elements. Oh, that, that's always so nice. No, yeah, and playing. I don't understand why in this day and age, Everyone doesn't do that. It's a simple toggle of display it yes or no. Yeah. Like it's, and that's kind of one of the reasons. Let you like, customize the experience a bit. Yeah, which, and that's that's why I, I had a lot more fun in The Witcher when I added like some mods to like be able to turn off the HUD and be able to you know do this and that. Like, and I understand like consoles can't necessarily do that that easily, but if a developer builds it in, why not? Yeah. Hey, Nolan. What's up? I mean, I was gonna bring this up later in a certain segment. Okay. But I've not really touched Witcher. The Witcher expansion. Okay. Um, have they updated that HUD mod to work with the expansion? I, yet? I haven't checked. Oh. Okay. But no. I, yeah, I have. I haven't checked. I would yet. imagine so. Uh, not necessarily, because it's not. He, he, Brad's talking about the the friendly HUD, which yeah. is that's this is all user generated yeah. stuff. So if I'm the user sure doesn't. Been, no, but there there have been multiple uh, mods that if people have been like, all right, well, I'm not supporting this anymore. Yeah. So if someone else wants to take up the reins, go for it. But if no one else does, then the mod doesn't get updated. Yeah. Um. But yeah, that's really all I wanted to say. I, I literally just popped this in last night because I wanted to try what he said mm-hmm. um, before uh, the show. And honestly, I, like even in the short time I played it, and I think it made the experience more enjoyable because I felt I felt less tethered. Yeah. I felt less guided. It just felt more like I had more freedom, uh, which is cool. And I actually think I'm gonna go back and, and finish. I'm like I'm. I was always planning on going back to finish it, but I was gonna prioritize other things. But mm-hmm. I may actually go back as soon as I finish what I'm playing now and. Uh, and play through this. Do you think you might run into some difficulties? Probably. Uh, yeah, well, yeah, because I mean, some, this sometimes game is the, not the city the, is a little... Oh, God, I fell. <laughs> the city can be big, and it can be... Sometimes you can take a wrong turn, whereas if you had, like, Runder Vision on or something, you'd be able to know where to go more readily. Yeah, but I, I think... I think you start to rely on the runner vision too much oh definitely if it's 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 one of those situations where if it's there you're always going to be looking at it which like you were saying can be an issue like this lets me stop and look around and kind of absorb the environment a little bit and actually like isn't it kind of ironic that runner vision just has you focused on like this little line and not being aware of your surroundings when i feel like a runner's vision should be like hyper aware of their surroundings yeah i think that's absolutely ironic um it would be nice if it was more, more akin to something like a, like like the Witcher Vision or something, where it was a toggle. You could toggle it on and off, and that's something I really was hoping when we first played the alpha and we first saw footage that that was going to be the case. That you could literally just press like L three or something, yeah. and turn on and off yeah. that runner vision. I think nice. a lot of it's going to have to depend on, uh, like a lot of whether or not I keep playing like this is going to depend on, uh, you know, some people like Dante and Chad just said he tried this and it, he had some trouble find, keeping track of objectives and finding them. Yeah. Um, but I think you really are going to have to rely more on your map, uh, which you probably wouldn't be doing as much if you turned off runner vision mm-hmm. or if you had runner vision on. I mean, um, but like. Because if you see your objective on the map and you mark it as a waypoint, you will pretty much, as long as you're outside, you will be able to see it. Does it Does still it, give you the kind of general path on the map when you mark uh, it? You know, I don't know. I had okay. to double check. Because I, I, I know uh, in the game, like if you when you throw the waypoint down, it'll show you like a dotted line. Yeah. And which could maybe just once you do it, give you a kind of oh, I know I need to go f- straight and then make. Because I know you can push whatever. down on the thumbstick and it will generate that line. Mm, mm. But I think I turned that off too. Oh, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, but you know, I'm I'm gonna go back and play more of it. I'm cool. just, I thought it was pretty interesting. It was pretty good because there's there's some there are a few games out there where this is I, I see people suggesting stuff like this. Look at like Mike. He played all the way through The Witcher with no HUD, and that was that made that experience you know for him mm-hmm. really super enjoyable. And I yeah. think this might be one of those games where it may not be for everybody, but it may actually improve the experience 
for a lot of people. Cool. Um, but anyways, that's all I want to say about Mirror's Edge. We'll talk about some other stuff now. But um, again, we are giving away a copy of Mirror's Edge. So if you're interested, check out 4playernetwork.com slash giveaways and find out how to enter. We'll announce the winner of that um, next, next Thursday on the show. So I want to catch up with Brad a little bit. It's What's a, up, man? It's been a while since you've been on the show. Yeah, I've been playing some games, man. And there's actually a game that you and Crispy have played. Really? You've, you've played oh, yeah. Bloodstained. Oh, Bloodstained. Bloodstained. Yeah, I played that demo that y'all played at E3. Or Crispy yeah. played? Crispy played, I at played at E3. It. I watched Crispy play at E3. Um, I stood over his shoulder and watched him. Yeah. So we can talk about that. a while for that. I think people... I mean, I've been streaming it, so people see me play it. and I definitely have some things I kind of want to say about it. Um... First and foremost is that we are going to be talking about a game in, in a little minute that, um, that this developer also worked on. I think a different team, but this is developed by Inti Creates. You know, the the team, I, I think Iga has a couple of his own people and he is leading the project. But uh, this is an Inti Creates game, so it should, this should, should be interesting when we're talking about Mighty Number no. 9 later. Um, this, okay, so so here here is the great news. They've, at the very least, really captured the feel. I mean, like, this is like a straight-up Ego Baby. Yeah. Like, if you've played Aria of Sorrow or Dawn of Sorrow, he made another one of those. This, it it, it feels like Castlevania down to the details, which is good. Castlevania as fuck. Uh, like, Egovania down to the details. I mean, every enemy has a soul, except it's like a shard in this. But you can equip them onto different um, slots. Very much like Ari of Sorrow or Dawn of Sorrow. And, and it even has like the same like level up uh, mechanics too, where like those souls or shards or abilities can actually level up and get more powerful based on like how many absorbs you, uh, souls shards you absorb. Mm -hmm. So it can be very like addictive and grindy and RPG like like those Sorrow games and why I think those are probably like his best ones since Symphony of the Night. So if you like those games, you're probably gonna like this. I mean, if you like any Egovania, you're probably really going to like this. Um, with that said, and again, getting the feel down was super important, especially because this is a sprite-based game. I mean, this is not a sprite-based game. This is like 3D models. Mm -hmm. And when you go from that transition to 2D, uh, 2D art to 3D art, which is very different, you know, uh, sometimes the feel gets fucked up in that process. Yeah. But, um, you know, luckily all of that seems intact here. Can like, I ask they you definitely know their priority. About that? About yeah. the sp specifically about the feel? Yeah. Because I was watching Crispy play this, um, and it seemed to me just from an outside perspective, like, it seemed kind of... I don't know if it's just because, like, the moveset is limited because it's so early, but it seemed kind of... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Like, sluggish? Like every Like, every attack is, like... You know, oh you well, know you know it definitely depends on the weapon. Like I'm gonna get some kung fu boots here in a second. And it's it, kung fu boots, right? And it's definitely not sluggish. You yeah. know, it, it depends on the weapon. Like in the sorrow games, you would get like very slow. It weapons. seemed like it seemed like it didn't want to let you like attack like chain attacks together. Oh like, well, you've never been able to do that in, in these Castlevania games. Yeah. Yeah. I guess it's just been a while since I Castlevania. I mean, if you if you like if you go like, back and watch like that footage of me playing. Symphony of the Night too. Like Alucard isn't necessarily like zipping around the screen. Well, see, the, well, yeah. well, the, that, that that yeah. that's the thing. I mean, I mean, it's never been about combos and like, and and um, you know, like, there's no combat system per se. I mean, it, it's Castlevania. Even since the originals, has all been about maneuverability and timing. And and why is the footage kind of chopping? Did you pull a Nolan? Um, no, no. Um, it, and. So, you know, it's about positioning, timing, manu maneuvering, you know, man, what is going on? It's probably just my computer. My computer's hard breeze heavily these days. Um, uh, I, I would, like, even the detail, like, the menus are the fucking same. Uh, I noticed that if you pull up the weapons uh, in the equipment and you hit the sort button, it shows a big, long list of weapon types that are in the game. Nice. Which is cool. So, like, whip whips are in there, guns are in there. Like, it's got the whole fucking Igarashi gamut. Gamut? So, uh, I'm, yep. pretty, I'm pretty excited about that. Uh, I do have some concerns, though. And I want to bring these up. And it's it's pretty early in development. But, and I like to bring these up now. In fact, I almost went on, like, their, their official message board and, like, started a big thread because <laughs> because it, it, it's one thing that I want to see improved. 
So w one of the problems that Igarashi games had towards the end, uh, the exception being Harmony of Despair, I think I, I think that was a kind of, of a unique thing in its own, and level design, and that was pretty unique, mostly because there was, I guess, less of it, because you replayed maps and stuff. But, like, the... Uh, this is not a very ambitious little demo or teaser here. Like the level design is like bare bones, basic as fuck. And and Igor, if if Igarashi's games have gotten one like uh, complaint towards like sort of the end of them, um, definitely with like Portrait of Ruin and maybe Order of Ecclesia to a lesser extent, is that you know it just seemed like they were trying, not trying as hard with level design. It was predictable. It was kind of boring. I mean, there wasn't many interesting like. You know twists or quirks to it you know no like crazy platforming and stuff i mean it was still there occasionally but it was weaker uh, i felt like since symphony of the night and and, and I, I see this demo and i'm like man there is nothing unique about this environment at all it's just platforms now i know it's an early like little like proof of concept almost i mean this is the first gameplay that was released and it's playable like that shit can improve but i do have my concerns that maybe that stuff will won't uh, you know, get better, you know, it, it, and, it, and it does kind of worry me because they're so focused on going, hey, we made another one of these. It's just like that. Are, you're happy, right? I don't want to just see another one. I would like to see some improvement. You know, I don't want this to be his the worst ego vein. What's not going to be the worst ego vein? Yeah. It's, 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 but you want it to feel, uh, and you want it to, there's, feel there's, fresh. There needs you know? to be a, there needs to be at least a little bit of ambition, like, yeah, there. Um, yeah. And but they're you know, doing some neat things. But you know, part of it is, you know, I'm, this is just me speculating here, but you know, I feel like it wasn't that long ago where it was like they were, sure, they were just sending updates that were like basic prototyping, mm -hmm. where it's like they hadn't even really decided how the game was going to look in motion. Yeah, um, but, but, so it's still super early. Like, I know, but I'm saying this based on like the problems that he's run into before. You know, like if there's one thing I could knock uh, against, you know, some of those other ones, it's it is level design, and I don't want, I I want. I don't want them to go all out with this game. I really yeah. do. Um, it's got it's got really I, what I'm really digging about it is it's very colorful and it's very like I like the character design a lot. I like the enemy design. Enemy designs are, are, are look nice too. Um, I think the environments could use a little bit of work, but again, this is very early. Yeah. Um, but but the actual like like it almost looks like a comic book. Like some some of these uh, definitely some of these character models and stuff. Some of these enemy. Uh, Designs and uh, the the way the color schemes work, like like they just look kind of nicely rendered, which is which is great because another problem that Egavain, uh criticism Egavain had was kind of recycling you know monsters and like sprites from like way back since Rondo of Blood, but this is all new stuff, so it's exciting to see some cool looking shit, you know. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm excited. I just wanted to you know bring a little bit of reality to the situation. You know, this is not Konami. Uh, uh, this is not his former team necessarily. This is Inti Creates. You know, like, like they're kind of relying heavily on on uh, Igarashi to like lead yeah. the like to make the sh call the shots that make this to help make this game feel yeah. like classic. Mm -hmm. Castlevania. The, the the core of it's there. I think the most important thing was the feel and kind of like the systems, and we know those are going to be rock solid, right? Um, like every single one of these enemies in this demo has like you know a soul that you can that you can get. Well, can we use this as a slight transition? Yeah. Um, because another game that we're going to talk about this week, uh, no one has played, um, is also a Kickstarter mm -hmm. project. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, but the difference being here, this project is done it's out uh it is finished yep and it, 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 unless i'm forgetting one this is the first this is the first case of like a major developer who everyone knows going out and relying and moving away from their publisher and making you know an agreement with kickstarter and funding their project solely through kickstarter and then having the game developed that way uh, and of course i'm talking about mighty number no. nine Blech. uh and it's out now and it's kind of a mess um, There's been a lot of uh, talk around the internet about the quality and and just everything about this game. Which could be for any number of reasons, but at the same time, it is also the first game that I could think of that is a major developer going off on their own and doing a project to try and recreate a classic game. Recreating the, the game they are known for, but not yeah, because they don't own exactly, the license. Which is exactly what Bloodstained is. Yes, exactly. Um, so... It kind of concerns me. I mean, obviously, they're two different teams. Two like they're two different people. They're two. It different is projects. the same company. I mean, it's the same studio. They're headed by different 
Which is also people. a huge reason but for concern here. Also, but. Inti Creates, they've made, like, plenty solid games in the past. I mean, yeah, they have. The, even more recently, what was that Azure Striker Gunvolt mm -hmm. or whatever? Mm -hmm. Gunvolt. Like, like that, that. That's another like very Mega Man type, a game that that those games reviewed well. There's been two of them. But you know what? Gun Gunvolt's better than this. Oh, I'm sure it is. I believe it. Yeah. So why are we just like, why are we dropping frames just on the? It's not footage? dropping frames. I mean, it's just, ju literally just on the footage. It's like stopping and going. I don't know. Chris Davis is, is working on. It. Anyways, it, it, I don't know. It Mighty can, Number Nine. I, I have a theory. Um. So. so who here backed it? Was no I one, did. No one backed it. I think I think I'm the only one. Um, yes. Were oh you, no, Nick didn't. You didn't. I was close. I was the, I was. Teetering. Oh no, yeah, you didn't. That's the only right, thing yeah. that stopped me is that I was like, this do I really was, want to? Because I've never actually played a Mega Man game, which is one of those shameful secrets I have. This was announced during PAX Prime 2013, right? Uh, yeah. Like we were in Joseph's apartment when this went up. Maybe. Yeah, it might be. I remember. Yeah, I do. So was that the was that the that was the Pax, the Pax Prime. that was the Pax Prime <laughs> the yes. the Pax Prime where all yeah. the crazy shit happened. Yeah. Um, also, I realized so I played the, I actually played the demo for this at E three last year, mm -hmm. and I remember walking away from that demo being like maybe I just don't get it because mm -hmm. I've never played a Mega Man game, but I was like <laughs> something about this doesn't feel right, and I was like I think I'm just missing. Like I miss I'm, I miss that assume. I'm lacking that understanding that people who have played Mega Man would have mm -hmm. so i kind of decided i mean that was kind of yeah, what i was that, like i'm gonna wait what and see. you're what you were missing was nostalgia probably you're <laughs> you're probably right there and uh and no that's not the case next so let me let me uh, just talk a little bit about my 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 thoughts and opinions on this and uh, it sucks because i wanted the game footage to go along with it it'll be there for the youtube but not now uh, just, just some of the issues I've been having with this game, and so the core Mega Man mechanics are there, yeah, and they work well. It well, is what, all what of the shit that they've added in that yeah. I'm having issues. Just real quick, with. what what do we what do we define as classic Mega Man mechanics? Just the shooting, and run, the jump, shoot, get boss abilities. Yep. Boss abilities. Get, yeah. So get getting boss abilities. Is so like he, the here's the thing: thing. I right. played this game for two hours. Uh -huh. I haven't beaten a single boss yet. That's crazy. Uh, but you tried. I fought three bosses. Well, I mean that's also pretty Mega Man. And and I I'm not I'm not mad at this game because I haven't been able to beat a boss. I don't know if you were you were here, Brad, but I was mentioning the fact that uh, the problems I have with this game are all of the new shit that's been added into it mm -hmm. because none of it works very well. Like they've added this you know this uh, dash mechanic, which is yeah. a pretty major thing. You you shoot enemies and weaken them to a point where you can dash through them. A big problem is that you'll notice me do it a, a few times in this footage. You can't dash off of a ladder. You have to jump and then dash. Yeah. Very frustrating. I don't understand why that's the case. Uh, a new mechanic they added. Well, going back to the dashing real quick. Um, so they, they, this, there's this whole thing about make, doing combos. And, uh, you know, if you combo dash multiple enemies, it'll be like, oh, you know, big combo. Great job. Uh, few and fucking far between when that happens. Yeah. Like, I don't understand why there's this combo system that I never fucking use. Yeah. Like, I, I, if you watch this footage, I only come across multiple enemies, like, once or twice. The like, dashing looks kind of fun. But that's it, it, it's fun. It's actually kind of hard to control. Yeah. I, like, it's, it's, it, you can't control it at all. You dash a certain distance and that's where you land, but sometimes you think you're going to overshoot things and you try and, like, overcompensate. The, the dash is infinite. You can dash as many times until you fall. Dash your heart out? Yeah, but every time you dash, you'll fall a little bit farther. Um, if you'll notice in the footage, there's there's also a ledge grab ability Yeah. Uh, that doesn't always work. Sometimes there are some ledges you can't grab onto, which doesn't make any sense to me. Uh, if you add a ledge grab ability, I should be able to grab any ledge. Um, the... Uh, uh, other issue with the dashing is you can't you can't touch enemies. That's common for Mega Man. Yeah. Uh, but the problem is Even like when you're dashing. No, when you're you, so if you dash into an enemy, they have to be in that weakened state. The problem is if you come out of a dash just barely not close enough to kill an enemy, even though they're weakened, you still take damage, which is really frustrating to me. You can't dash through bullets, which is kind of frustrating. I really wish you could. Um, uh, the dash to me almost feels like a dodge, yeah. but it doesn't work that way. Um, the uh, you, there's there's a few times in this footage you'll notice there are these hanging rings uh, that you can grab onto, yeah, uh, and that will pull you up to a different level. And that's that's not something out of the ordinary. There's been, it's been done before. 
Uh, and the problem is, a lot of the times, there are enemies on those rings. And so you have to first shoot them. To, so so l l let me get this out of the way. You can completely kill an enemy by shooting them. You don't have to dash into them. Yeah. But dashing it into them... It slows the pace down, though. Yeah, it does slow the pace. Dashing into them will also sometimes give you boost, like power-ups. Like, yeah. it'll give you more powerful, like, blasters. Faster or Faster run. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, so the, you want to, to dash into enemies. And so the problem is, and you'll you'll see at some points in the footage, uh, when I'll, I'll shoot a guy that's hanging on a, a ring that I need to now be on, uh, I will damage him enough to kill him, I will dash into it, and then all of a sudden I, I didn't grab onto the ring. Uh, and, and there are many times where I'm trying to dash into rings and it's just not happening. Yeah. Like he just doesn't want to grab it. And then, like I said, like all of my problems... Is this I, one of the bosses you're fighting? Uh, this is a mini boss. Oh. But you beat, so you beat this one? Uh, yes. Gotcha. Uh, and, and so the the levels are set up like that. You know, there, there will be every once in a while there's like a mini boss or just kind of like a... The screen will pause and you'll fight like a wave of enemies will just keep coming and you, you kill them as many as you can or whatever. Um... But yeah, and so like, it's just I just I don't. Doesn't seem like. What's up? It does. This game doesn't seem rancid. It just seems kind of like boring and uninspired. It's boring, uninspired. It doesn't like. Look how many times like I'm trying to like so often, an enemy will just be just out of your jump height, to where you can your sh bullets are constantly going right underneath them. Yeah. And that is so frustrating. And you, you can't shoot at an angle. No. Just what? straight. No, yeah. It's Mega Man. Mega Man, you've never really been able to... But, that, like, yeah. why... Because like, that's core Mega Man. It's all, it, once again, they, was it core because they made it? They, they act... They yeah, that's how made they made that decision? Or yeah. is it... Or well, because that a, limitation have, like, a lot of the combat, a lot of the combat is dependent on the platforming. Correct. So, so it's, if, if you can just stand there and boop, 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 everything, you're not yeah. jumping around the stage and, like, using your different, like, like rush abilities and stuff like that. Yeah. Um... And, and Chris Davis says he's dog. surprised by how low the jump Well, I'm not always height. jumping at my highest height. There, You can control how high you jump. Yeah. And then, like um, yes, and once again, yeah. like Chris was saying, that is all about height of enemies and height of platforms. And so you want that. But once again, often there are enemies just out of my jump height, which gets super frustrating. Uh, and I'm fine with that. I'm fine with, you know, uh, jumping to shoot. I mean, that's just like a core mechanic of the game. And, but like I'm saying, like, all of the new shit is stuff I have problems with. Yeah. Um, this game, if you start doing poorly, when it respawns you, it gives you, like, power-ups. And that's I like don't, a yeah, and I don't like that. I don't like that. That's something that they built. That should be built. a decision the player makes. I don't like that. That's that. something they built into the game. And, and and so this this footage right here is kind of some of the stuff I was talking about when it comes to those like floating rings and whatnot. Uh, but you'll notice like sometimes I will I will jump and dash towards a ledge and I will be just a little too low to grab it and then I'm fucked. Yeah. Like I can't do anything about it. I can't like recover. There's nothing you. There's no wall jump. Like, I think a wall jump would be fucking amazing in this game. I think yeah. that would make... I don't want to say make it easier. I just think it would make it more... Um, it would fix issues that the game has. Yeah. Um, well, that's... Are you are you planning on finishing this game or trying? I don't know. I'm going to play it more. I, mean, I haven't given yeah. up on it. It's just it was a very frustrating event where I was fairly excited to play it. Um, and I just had a shitty, shitty time. Yeah. I tried three different levels... Uh, I just like there's like there's this one level where there are these towers falling over and they're instant death if they touch you. Uh, but the problem is it's not as instant death if it it falls on you. If you're just like one pixel near it, yeah. it kills you. Like think think of like a like think of like a pole falling and brushing your arm dead. And I just I, that's Fucked. so dumb to me. Yeah, like yeah. I, I just don't understand why they did that. It seems like a series of bad decisions. Um also, this game is apparently really short. Uh, yeah, I mean, uh, from what I've gathered, uh, there's you know the eight the eight uh, boss eight levels. Uh, each level, I've been able to get to the boss in about I don't know, fifteen minutes if I don't die. There's Twenty eight minutes. Of them? Well, the problem is Nick, no one's gonna beat it on their first try every yeah. level. That's the whole yeah, point. I mean, like I've said, I've played this game for two hours and technically I've made no progress. All NES games are two hours pretty much. If yeah. Good yeah. So wait, if you fail, you died. It's it's yeah. You restart the level. It's Mega yeah. Man. But, I've there, never played Mega there's Man. Usually, there's usually I a am checkpoint literally halfway. So, so about there, Mega there, Man. there's multiple checkpoints. Uh, I will tell you that the checkpointing is horrible. Uh, they, 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 don't, they are not great for, especially like I'll, I'll, I'll have you know made it past a certain point, uh, and I think oh there was clearly going to be a checkpoint right there, but there wasn't, 
and it will put me back way much farther than I think it should have. Uh, especially for how, quote, easy the game is with, like, when you do poorly at giving you boosters and stuff like that. Yeah. Uh, but, um... But yeah, the checkpointing is bad. You know, it's it's a live system, so you know x amount of lives, and then it's game over. You have to start yeah. the level over from the beginning. Well, that's a shame. I oh. I would be curious if you end up continuing. No, I'm I, I'm, I I'm, I'm I haven't given up on it. It it sucks. I back this game. I want it to be good, uh -huh. uh, but it's not. Oh, the the one of the, another super fucking frustrating thing is enemy placements, hit boxes, and stuff like that. There, there's just one level where there's all this fire on the bottom. And you, you can't go in. If you go into the fire, it damages you. But there are all these ledges you have to platform on. But if you're hanging on the ledge, the fire still hits you. Uh. And so it can be super fucking frustrating trying to get off. Because the problem was with that section, you can't jump too high. Because there's a fucking insta-kill laser above it. Yeah. So if you jump too high, you hit the insta-kill laser. If you don't jump high enough, you don't make it onto the platform. And you ledge grab, which makes you too low. So you hit the fire. And there was this one section where I just kept dying over and over and over because I wasn't absolutely perfect. Yeah. Which is really frustrating to me. I, you shouldn't have... I, I'm not... Like I said, I'm not saying the game needs to be easy. You just shouldn't have to be perfect. Yeah. For sure. Um, I, I, and there, there's just a lot of scenarios where there's like an enemy right near a ledge uh, and you can't back up to get to him. So you kind of have to hang on the ledge and try and jump and shoot him. But sometimes... Like, I don't know. It's just... Like, there's a lot of shit that irks me. Uh, yeah, and so yeah. He, here's a, I guess, a, kind of like a concluding question, and this mm -hmm. is something we're not going to have an answer to, but this is, oh my god, what happened? Okay, I missed that ring for some stupid fucking reason. Yeah, okay, so do we, so right now there's a lot of hubbub about this game, because yeah. it's, it's just, it just came out, it was a Kickstarter game, mm -hmm. people are upset, especially people who backed it. Mm -hmm. Um do you think this is one of those situations where people are super upset about it now? Maybe after time passes a little bit, maybe it people find some value in it, or it's possible. You know what I'm saying? Like, like right now, people are upset. Yeah, you know? people wanted to. People also really want, wanted to hate this game long before it came out. Well, I, yeah, yeah I just, a lot of it is because those delays. Yeah, were, the the delays that were happening, a lot of the stuff that was going on behind the scenes, them promising things. I mean, uh, it, it's all the stuff that we don't see when it's not a Kickstarter game, but when it's a Kickstarter game, it's the realities of, of development. Like, the difficulties yeah. of, and expenses of game development are, are public, and people have learned to, like, hate that, as you a, know? As a backer, Nolan, were they... Were they because like I'm back right now. I back Bloodstain and I back Ukulele. No, and so I, so I they, they are of, not. They were nowhere near as active. Okay, as, the, I've been noticing. Yeah. I get updates all. No, the yeah, time. and so that's one of the things that I think people appreciate and like about both Ukulele and Bloodstain is you're constantly and Indivisible. That's another one yeah. that I backed, and they are constantly at least two a month yeah. sending you updates. Hey, this is where we're at. This is the progress we're making. This is what's going on. Whereas this, you got like nothing. Like if I look through my email. For um, Mighty Number no. Nine, I my last email besides like the couple from this past few months with them like hey blah 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 was like last September. Yeah. They, were, they like they very. I feel few like emails. that's kind of a sign. And, of I, and I don't. I, I not to be offensive to anybody, but a lot of them were in Japanese. Yeah. And I I understand that the, uh, the with no translation at all. Yeah. No. Just in Japanese. Like click here. And I, I, it's like, oh, uh, fill out this survey, and then a, a lot of Japanese characters, and then a button. And I don't know. And, and that's just kind of one of those things where I'm like, I don't understand you why you... filled it out to the best of your ability. If, if, go back to your own country, am I right? Yeah, sure. Make uh, America great again. Uh, oh. if, if you're, if you're, if you're from, uh, you know... Uh, yeah, okay, thanks. Uh, if you're from a country, and you're sending out a game to multiple people... Yeah. Uh, either I've, I've, A... You can look at the region that person's from, so you know what language they speak, or you do the typical English, yeah, I mean, German, your Chinese, whatever you know the, the, those like four or five languages that everything's in. It's obvious that all of your backers are not going to speak Japanese. Mm -hmm. It's just one of those like you're alienating. You're just like it just comes off wrong. Okay. Anyways, we'll we'll talk more about Mighty Number no. Nine maybe after we. There played, are more delightful more. platformers that you could have been playing or you could play. Oh, nice transition, so, Bradley. I played. The new Kirby game. I finished it actually. Oh, you didn't want to talk about which is crazy trials? because I don't, I, I don't, um, uh, sorry. I don't actually play a lot of handheld games. So it was, but I went out of town, went to Houston. Do we and, have footage? And, and I was like, yeah, we have footage. Sweet. Hopefully, it runs okay. Well, my Mirror's um, Edge footage ran well. I don't know why. 
Well, I, I, I don't know. Um, maybe close team. Um, so Kirby, uh, so Kirby, I don't even know why I got this. I, I just knew no one else was going to play it. I still had Nolan's broadcast 3DS. So I was like, I can stream some of this too. And I did stream some of it. Well, and, you uh, my 3DS. Yeah. I was like, this is this is a nice delight. I mean, Kirby's. The thing is, Kirby has forever been a series that has been good, but never like revelatory. I don't think. I think like every Kirby game in the history of the world has gotten like an eight out of ten it's from funny. everyone. I'm pretty you know, sure. It's, it's, didn't you do a, Didn't you do a review of Kirby? Uh, what was the last one? Uh, Rainbow Curse. But, Ra but see, that's yeah, not a regular Kirby game. I think you gave Rainbow Curse an 8 out of 10 if I remember Sure, correctly. sure, sure. The, the thing is that that's not a regular Kirby game. I like the Canvas Curse games uh, because they don't play like regular Kirby games. I, I feel like regular Kirby is nice, but it's a little too simple, a little too easy, usually. You know, the, the, the new thing they added for this one is you have a mech now um or you can hop in a mech different levels have parts where you're in a mech and you know they can also get mech they can also like absorb uh enemy abilities just like regular kirby can so like i have i, I have absorbed a cutter enemy so now i have crazy like chainsaw oh, blades oh that's cool you're re like yeah that, rolling up the chain sorry, sorry. Like, like oftentimes during the, the mech sequences it you do some stuff that's slightly puzzly as well but it's never too oh, difficult so you're not in the mech the can, entire time can, no, I, can no. I make one side while I'm thinking about it yeah. I, I, out of curiosity I looked at my email yeah. yeah I have a bunch of emails from Mighty Number no. 9 from 2014 yeah two emails from 2015 Jesus and Christ then, I don't know if maybe they didn't I don't delete emails like that related to I always leave those yeah. for so I can go back and reference them but yeah anyway and continue this game is fun this, and it looks good and delightful and breezy and it's the kind of thing where you know it's not when you say breezy they, do you mean just like not stressful it's just yeah well I mean it's not stressful it's just it's a delight, you know? I mean, getting in the mech feels very empowering, but I guess in a Kirby game, you always feel really powerful because, you know, it's just not that difficult and the abilities are always really cool. And you get some really cool pow uh, 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 power-ups in this one, and I feel like more than ever, you have, like, a lot of abilities. I feel like for, for each for each um, ability, like, uh, enemy you absorb, like, ability set you get, like, mm -hmm. you have, like... Five, six, seven, eight, nine things you can do with that uh, with that uh, form that you're in. Like they've really gone. So it's, not, it's pretty no longer crazy. just like the you're in that one form. You have that one ability. No, like it, you, it's a it's a lot it of looks stuff. Fun. I mean, nice. I mean, well, one one of my favorite ones is is the jet Kirby because it just it it controls differently. Like you jet pack around because you're a fucking jet. And you're <laughs> zooming around. And one of the one of my problems with Kirby is that it's never fun to like run through these levels yeah. because he's so like plotting and his jump is real floaty, you know? And that's one of the reasons I love Canvas Curse and Rainbow Curse so much because you you play those real fast and and you know, you get good at them and, and, and it's not plotting Kirby, you know? I feel I feel like this like it's funny because we, we were watching Bloodstain, we were watching Mighty Number no. Nine, and like the I mean it's, obviously it's a different style of game, and this is you know it's it's Kirby, but like I feel like there's so much going on on screen, like there's so much like it feels so much. Yeah, snappier. that's what I'm saying. Like 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 I think one of the reasons Mighty Number no. Nine is fucking lame is because it's simple and the level design sucks, and, and and that's what sort of made me realize that like I'm worried. I want Bloodstain. To not be like this, yeah. You know? like, this, like there's a lot, there's a lot of moving parts in this. Holy crap, what's happening? Oh, this is. I thought it, I thought it was cool when you were in the mech and like those Kirby's hammers that are swinging back and forth, yeah. hit you and you fly through it. I'm assuming that's yeah, supposed to take effect, 3D yeah. effect. Oh, so I'll say this: I never play games in 3D, but this game looks really good in 3D. Nice. And you're also jumping into like doing stuff in the is background it, and foreground a lot. It's like a depth sort of 3D. Or yeah. Is there a lot yeah, because like a minute ago when that hammer hit him. It, like he actually flew towards the screen, like cracked the screen and uh, slid it's, down. It's really, really which is good. A pretty cool effect. So uh, it's this fun breezy game. Like, like that's the thing. I don't know if I would ever like throw down. What is this? Like forty bucks or something to play? I feel like. This? Yeah, I feel like Kirby games should always be thirty dollars or some shit. But you know, it's or fun some, and it's nice and like you know, there's some good boss fights. The 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 um, the final boss air fight is like it turns into Star Fox, which was really oh, did strange. You yeah, I finished it. I mean, I just I just sort of played it all weekend, um, 
and and got through it. I mean, I, it wasn't super long or anything, but you yeah. know, it was fun. Like, oh, here's here's Jet Kirby, and it just kind of changes the way you move around, and it's fun. Like, like I was like, dude, there's so much it, variety. It, it, in if way. if Kirby, we'll see that if, if Kirby always played like this, you know, it would it would be more fun to play. <laughs> um, and it's fun. It's just it's so easy and like. But sometimes you just gotta play an easy game, man. Sometimes it's just I don't know. I I, I feel like if it's a platformer, I think dude, it was so refreshing going from Dark Souls to Ratchet and Clank. <laughs> yeah, like, Ratchet and Clank. No is idea. Also easy, but... Sometimes you just need a, a palate cleanser. Yeah. <laughs> so it's nice. I mean, I, I don't know what else to say. It's it's another one of these Kirby games. And then of course I jump right back into the fray with Dark Souls too. <laughs> so. Yeah. Um, oh, Doctor. Oh, I, I don't think I get it here, but. You can turn to like Dr. Mario Kirby. What? Really? That's yeah, cool. and it's fucking cool. He, throw, you... he throws the pills just like in Smash Brothers. See, but he has, all these, he has all these other moves. Let, let me explain. Just, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll end with this. So like, so like Dr. Mario Kirby, like he doesn't just throw pills, but like his dash attack is like, like he, he hits the dude. He pulls out like hit the, the chart, the medical clip, like the medical or, chart, yeah. you know, he, he has like, if you hold down and charge, like he'll bust out a whole chemistry lab and start making potions. And like, he has a <laughs> random chance to, depending on what element it is, he'll get it. Or you can like kind of hold it and charge it and like shoot it out when you want. He has the ability to like, he, sh he has a syringe that he shoots up into the air and just sprouts these rainbow like like colors of of liquid it's crazy like there's all this cool and there's, like, like there's so much personality yeah. to the form there's the wonderful genital jousting kirby yes Sorry, I'm i, I think i get really upset in this footage because I, I, mean, I mean to get that fucking pink dr mess. mario kirby but it, <laughs> it really is like like it's hard to dislike Kirby, like you know, he, he's so fucking lovable. Even Malia was like, "Oh my god, this thing is so cute." You know what? So oh, here, here he is. Oh, it's so cool! Oh my god! Okay, so uh, <laughs> there's uh, making potions, dude. That's so cool. It's dude, fucking cool. One thing I like, I'm watching this footage, and then like it, went, it makes me a little worried because like we've all kind of noticed this like steady decline in Nintendo's focus on the 3DS. Yo, that's it's it's embarrassing. Good, it's such it's a good platform. Yeah. There's so many like when they take their time and they do, they make it like an original game for the 3DS, it's usually pretty damn fucking good. Like the 3DS is like the one like, you know, what the PSP was cool and the Vita came out and that was cool, I guess, but it's just like like the 3DS has such potential. Well, the, the, yeah, the ever since they released the DS. I don't want this to like, be there, like there was, another there was, like yeah. phase they go through and then move on to the next thing. Like, I don't think 3D they will. I think 3D has such a cool platform. Yeah, and I think that they kind of tried to re revamp that with the new 3DS. Of course, they give it the shitty fucking name. They just uh, need to make focus on the games, man. Yeah. Focus on the fight. But Nintendo is always bad at focusing on the games. But man, I just want to say that because this this looks th like just watching this footage makes me want to play it, even mm -hmm. though I really had no intention of playing it. Mm -hmm. um, if Mario Number no. Nine is getting you down, maybe try the new Kirby. Which is called Planet Robot. Ro Ro Robobot. 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 Kirby, Planet now Robobot. Wanna, I, I'm glad that somebody else took the hit and played it first because I wanted to be excited about a Kirby <laughs> game with a mech, but I didn't want to, like... Yeah. Fully commit. I didn't want to be the first one through the breach. This is why yeah. Gamefly exists. <laughs> that is true. That is true. Um, so I want to talk about a game real quick. Uh, so I finally dived back into Quantum Break, Whoa. which was... On my most anticipated games of the year. I, yeah, I believe Wake. it was your number one. Uh, was it? Maybe I think it was. So. It was up there. Which is why it felt really weird when I came out, I played it, and then like something else came out shortly so, thereafter, and I just I so moved on to it and distancing. didn't go back to it. He's distancing from it happens. Oh, was it? You were was playing Souls games. I mean, I can't I remember. Oh, who can even remember? <laughs> <laughs> fuck, go fuck yourself. Um, but yeah, so I finally actually, funnily enough, I restarted Quantum Break. Huh. From the beginning. Why is that? Did you uh, even watch the episodes of the show again? I did. <laughs> uh, but I restarted it mostly because, one, I couldn't really remember, you know, the, there's a lot going on in combat. And mm -hmm. it was kind of a clusterfuck when I tried to just jump back into it. Second of all, it is a pretty story-heavy game. Um, and I was bre like, what, I will say this just right off the bat. Like, my biggest complaint with this game is that, and this, this mostly came to light when I was broadcasting it, because there is way too much goddamn reading in this game. Mm. Like, oh, yeah. all of the, like, there is a lot of, this is a pretty narrative-heavy game, and so much of it is delivered in, like, reading notes. Yeah, like, like picking either. up notes. They're, all, they're like, you find a laptop and you read an email. And it's like, it, it, 
One, it's a, you read an entire Sorry, email chain. Yeah. Two, they put the most recent email at the top. Mm -hmm. So if you want to read the entire email chain, oh, you have to scroll to the bottom so to see where it started and then read it backwards. Oh. That sounds like real email. Sounds like real email, but it's also a pain in the dick but because is, is typically that is done that way because at that point they, you know, in real life, you've already you read all those emails. The emails. Yeah. But in this game, you're having to scroll to the bottom of them just to see where the conversation started, which yeah. is a pain in the ass. Right. Nobody's playing this game but being like, oh, I really appreciate the attention to detail <laughs> that they put in organizing the in-game web I, browser. I, like, I want to say this, Crispy. <laughs> you absolutely have to play this game. Really? Dude, you fucking love time. This, dude. I mean, but is it like... Don't... <laughs> is, is, yeah. this, is this fucking, like, Sherman and Mr. Peabody time travel? I don't, or? I don't, I, I'm gonna be honest, I have no idea what or that is. Or is this, like, the man who folded is. himself kind of time travel? I also it's like Primer. Um, like Primer? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. I, I, don't, I doubt that. I wish I knew how like to answer that question, but they, like, they lean really, really heavily on time travel. Especially in the combat. Um, and obviously there's a lot of, there's a lot of really quote-unquote scientific talk about realities and, you know, time-space continuums. Fuck it, I'm in. Let's do it. And, you know, every time I'm, I'm playing this, I'm like, God damn it, okay. Crispy needs to play this. Even if, you know, you know, I'm not the best judge of it. It may not it may not be up to your standards, right. Crispy. Um, but they do a lot of cool shit. Like, what you're seeing right now, like, what I discovered as I played this, especially past that point where I already was before, as you start to level up your abilities and you get more abilities, combat becomes super fun. Nice. Like, I'm All dashing. Just, like, time like, abilities? You'll watch in a second. I, fight, I come across this enemy that's it's like a um, heavily armored guy. And, like, I have, like, six or seven abilities at my disposal. And you're just, like, I'm literally just dashing all over the place, slowing down time, freezing him. Um running super fast behind him and shooting his weak point in his back and then dashing out of the way and throwing down a shield and like you gotta play aggressively you you do have to play otherwise very aggressively. it sucks because um, you're just pot taking pot shots but that, and fucking but, but the controls are really really good and intuitive and they, they they feel really nice but like when you deliver a killing blow like a lot of this, this combat happens in the midst of what they call time stutters which is happening pretty much all the time throughout the game like you'll be walking around talking to someone all of the time Yes, all of the, <laughs> yes. You'll be walking around, and like throughout the game, they, these stutters happen, which is tied to the story. But like, essentially, time is coming to an end, and it's still slowly stuttering. Time, time is coming, is to, coming an to an so end. So everything freezes except for you, and like, so you're in the midst of these combat scenarios where you're fighting dudes, and then stutters will happen, and you're fighting these guys that are wearing these like packs on them that allow them to move within. Um, yeah, they're wearing plot devices. Okay. Yes, they're wearing plot. They're wearing they're wearing plot devices. <laughs> okay. But when you when you kill them, you destroy their plot device, so they freeze. So okay. when you deliver the killing blow, they like do this. Like, oh, crazy so instead thing. of like just going ragdoll and dying, they, they just like they freeze, freeze like dead. That's cool. It's super cool. So when I, you finish a battle with like five or six dudes, and there's like bodies floating everywhere in these really dramatic poses, and and all, there is there'll even be times where like 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 in up, coming up in a second, like this guy can. What, shoot this giant railgun and like blow up cars and they'll go flipping through the air and but the time setters are like constantly moving back and forth right. so it'll flip in the air and then zzz, rewind and go right back to where it was that's cool. and it's all happening like in combat that's cool how, how is the how's the show aspect is it, the show hold is, up the show is getting okay it's easy to tell when you're watching that <laughs> that this is a show that was made for a video game and is filmed on the budget allowed uh, for a video uh, game uh, yeah but for what it is I'm really enjoying it and it's getting more intense and like it's like it's actually I'm it's keeping me interested. I think, you know, the acting, like the writing may be a little thin, um, but and they're, they're they are, I will say this, and this is, you know, this is just me, but so I I watched episode three last night and I tweeted about this. There's straight up, a scene because this the show follows not not his not Sean Ashmore's character. Right, right. It follows a different character named Liam Burke. Um, he's kind of like he works for the agency that's kind of going after but he's like fighting back right okay uh, so you follow him and he is straight up straight up they are taking his he's jason Bourne. Hmm. like there was actually one scene in particular last night i was watching straight up homage to my favorite fight scene in in film ever just start stabbing a guy with a dude, pen no dude like I, it, it in like the, the 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 way the, sh the fight scene starts the way it's choreographed there's there is straight up a shot that I'm like holy shit that was straight out of that one fight scene I know it like so they're fighting in a bathroom this, this no. is a, this is a little bit but of it aside. ends the exact same way where he ends up choking right. the guy out with like a spoilers book. this is this is a little bit of an aside but it's funny you bring that up because 
Not, it is a poor man. Not, Maybe a, it is a poor man's right, Jason right. Bourne. Not last week's episode, but the week before that, that episode of Game of Thrones that had the big Arya plot line. Yes. That was a fucking Jason Bourne movie. Uh, wait, 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 wait. Like, like Remind her, me. What happened? She's well, running like, around yeah, the city. She's running, run, like, they... they let's not get into like, it. Oh, yeah. Well, there's a lot of Jason chased. Bourne flying around is all I'm saying. Well, there is What's a new movie on? coming out. Everyone's People are probably getting pretty fucking excited. But yeah, I'm, like, I'm, I'm not sure just saying this because, I'm yes, I'm very fucking excited, like, for the Jason Bourne movie, but, like, I was watching this, and I've watched that movie so many times, and I've seen that fight scene so many times. I was watching it. I was like, they're, they are not even... They are blatantly... This is a blatant homage hey, to Nick. that one fight scene. And Have was, you ever made love cool. to a woman with that Moby song in the background? <laughs> Why does everyone remember the Moby song? Dude, that's, that's so weird to me. Because it's Moby. Uh, I listen to that song a lot. <laughs> they, 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 only, they literally... You did, man. He dodged my question. They literally... He did dodge it. Did dodge that's a yes. Question. That's a yes. I may have made sweet love to the Moby song. Nick's, Nick's, what, got, what, his, Nick's got his was love making playlist. Love? Number one. Uh, it's some kind of metal song. Number two is Moby. <laughs> it's some kind of metal <laughs> song. Um, anyways, the the show is getting the show aspect is getting pretty good. Uh, the game is getting more and more intense. Like this. So you remember like when they first showed this game? They showed that set that like scene with the ship crashing to the bridge. Sure. So like I, that's actually pretty late in the game. I'm coming up to it, but like as a set piece, that moment is incredible. Because you're you're on that bridge when that ship hits it, and a stutter happens, and you are in the midst of the ship. Of, the ship is literally stuck in time and going stuck going back and forth, and the whole thing is falling apart and crumbling around you, and then rewinding. And you have to you have to use your ability your abilities to like there's like a uh, a truck that blows up, and it keeps sliding across this road when as the ship's pushing it. And as time keeps stuttering, it keeps happening over and over again. So you have to use your one of your abilities to to slow down time, so you can speed like run really fast, like speed through that area before the truck slams and crushes you. Yeah. And like it's so fucking cool. Like it's just they do so many cool things with the time mechanics. It's it, it's just a delight. <laughs> you know what? You've convinced me. I'm gonna try this game out. Uh, but I have one more question. Okay. Is he using a special time gun? Oh my god. No. Okay. Yes, so, I know what you're gonna say. Why aren't the bullets freeze? Why don't the bullets freeze when he fucking shoots the gun? Um Oh my god. Plot. You no. Nope. This is no what one, else did you this play? This is just one of those things you have why to Why don't the bullets freeze? They do there are scenes where bullets freeze. But when you they're fired from his gun yeah, and he's holding look, it. He's no, like, there is nothing you can say that will appease Crispy right no, now. There's, there's not. nothing. <laughs> and as it shouldn't. But he should be using a time knife, just like Deputy Dangle says. But like there there is a like they have a device, they have this plot device that, you know, he wears on a shed which creates like an energy field around him. Okay. That allows okay. him to oh, for well, sure. Well sorry. He, like does it use tachyons or like <laughs> Fuck you, Crispy. <laughs> just fuck you. Uh, there are plot holes, <laughs> as there are plot Dude, holes. Dude, there are plot all... holes in every single time travel. Story. Yeah, anything I do every time single... travel, it's impossible to avoid them. But if you can look past those, which you should be able to, it's super fun. I'm like, I was kind of like bummed about this game at first, but like, once you get honestly, it does take about a you know you get to play through like chapter one and maybe part of chapter two before you start to rack up some abilities. And start to upgrade those abilities, but once you kind of get to that point, man, combat is fun. For someone who loves science fiction so much, it seems like you only ever care about the science. <laughs> that I hate fiction. Yeah. <laughs> that is. That is. I'm pretty is, sure. I'm pretty sure the fiction true. part is the fact that he has a flux capacitor. In his That's not hole. true. I. 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 Pr <laughs> <laughs> oh man. I like, I I like Back to the Future. If that's any indication of how little I give a shit about science. Sometimes. Uh, all right. And you so know what? I, I wanted, Sean Ashmore's pretty good. I wanted good. To, to quickly. No one's ever said that I mean, sentence <laughs> in the world. Yeah. <laughs> he fits the role. He's, he's, it's a pretty. Like, I'm he, sure you could find a review of X2 out there that has that uh, line in it. Fucking like. Bobby. He's not bad. All I'm saying is. Just no one's ever said he's good. I mean, like, he's <laughs> just Sean Ashmore. Sh sure, but he's not. I, yeah, he's not bad, though. He's a yeah. poor oh, man. He literally Sean is Aston. himself. Yeah. And he's. Because of that, it comes across as a pretty genuine performance. It's not going to win any Oscars, obviously, for what well, it is. But the it's video game, game Oscars. Games don't win Oscars. Shut up! I hate all of you. He is a generic, good-looking white guy who controls time and shoots guns. Bang, bang, bang. That's exactly <laughs> what he is, and he does a pretty good job at it. All right. I wanted to quickly bring up the fact that last Saturday, the day after we got back from E3, yes, 
I built my new computer. Oh yeah, how'd that go? On the stream. Any uh, any like <gasps> it stressful took, moments? It took me five hours. Oh god. Booted up on the first try. Thank God. Everything worked out. There was no major issues. It just took me forever because I was. You sit by there. yourself. You couldn't get yeah. one of these guys. Nobody to come wanted over? to come over. Fucking. I so I told you at the time I was I was going to try, but I was yeah, also trying fine. to do other things. It's fine. Uh, that would have would have been nice for someone to help because I had the, bad memories from the flight. No, I Chris Davis. Lines, so. the, uh, no, the the most difficult thing was was idea. trying to uh, oh. trying to top mount my uh, my my water cooler yeah. in a pull uh, the fans in a pull position uh, uh, venting out of the case, which means that the fans had to be on the top with the radiator below it. Which mean it just re- was really difficult to secure by myself. If I had had someone else like holding it, it would have been easy. All right, Nolan. But hey, I got I, I, I got guilty. it working. I fucking I used some zip tie or uh, some twist ties, and I just so I fucking jerry rigged it and, and I got duct it working. Tape and everything yeah. just worked out fine. Um, but yeah, so I got it working. Like I said, to boot it up on the first try, everything's great. I'm playing all my games now in ultra at 60 frames a second, down sampling from 1440 to 1080. Did you get a new monitor? No. That's that's the thing is a new monitor. So like I'm at the point where it's like, my current monitor is 1080, uh, 144 hertz in one millisecond, and so that's pretty good for gaming. If I were to get like a 1440 monitor, yeah. like none of them have the 144 hertz or have the low millisecond uh, response time. Yeah, uh, and they're expensive, and so I'm kind of like, eh, I'll, I'll wait, uh, and maybe something better will come out. Uh, but yeah, so like I said, I'm, I'm downsampling though, which is the, the the process of forcing your graphics card to display at a higher resolution than your monitor is capable of displaying, which then scrunches the pixels. So it's like it's like anti-aliasing to an yeah, extent. It's smoother. Yeah, and, and it looks like, fucking beautiful. Because you can downsample and not have to have anti-aliasing on. Correct. Which is a system re- hog. Ex- exactly. And so I'm, I'm so instead of my CPU working. It's my graphics card, which is a 1080, so it's not even using it to yeah. its fullest potential. So yeah, so that's what I'm doing, and games fucking play great, and that's so. I, so I was actually because of that, I'm now able to play Dark Souls, three. Uh, I had gotten it working on my previous computer when I had everything low, <laughs> uh, and it would run at a 29 frames per second. Uh, but now that I have one it on, frame shot, and yeah, now that I have it on my new computer, everything's on max. That's running at sixty. So how much of it? Oh, it's, I don't know if you can control the frame locked? rate. I don't, I don't know. In Dark Souls, there's not like a setting for like, hey, set the frame rate. To how much there. have you played Dark Souls? Yeah, not much. Oh. Uh, I mean, I just recently started. So weird that like, I feel like we're a big Souls. No, no, I, I, I it's not, it's no one... The reason I didn't play it was because I couldn't run it properly, and now that I've only had my new computer for like not even a week. Yeah, yeah. Has, uh, does, does anybody thought? That maybe like that one specifically is sort of come and gone. Dark Souls. Yeah. I think I think it's just I think a part of that is just because it's kind of, you know, it's a sat- like, it, There's it's, a lot of Souls out there. A lot of- yeah, it's become. It's, so first of all, just the fact that we've received so many Souls games in such a short time, and, and there are a lot more Souls games coming. But remember out. when Souls it came like. out, you had certain people of the Souls community like, oh, all the all the fucking crimes against humanity that that Dark Souls Two caused are 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 gone because Dark Souls is back. Yeah. And then you, know, you play through and you finish and you're like, oh, there's more Dark Souls. I mean, it's not. Eh. Yeah. People blew it out of proportion. I, 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 think. I think that's probably what happened. I, it's one of those situations where it's a it's a great game, but it's more of what we've already seen that's great. Do people really hate two that much? Dude, can Brad, I just say this Brad is the perfect opportunity two. for me to just I, slip I this love, in? I put it on my top ten. Can I just slip this in? Because I've actually at this point now played a I've actually officially at this point made it farther in Dark Souls two than yeah. I had than I did the first time I started playing it. Yeah. I passed that point. Is it terrible? Dude, I'm I'm loving it. Then you're an idiot. <laughs> Have you not you read like anything? You like the Baby Souls game. You like the Baby Stoop. You're... How is Dark Souls 2 the Baby Souls game when like... <laughs> oh, read a message board, loser. <laughs> Get a life. Okay. I don't want to I don't want to open that can. You of probably worms. play Battleborn. All right. Anyway. Uh, I just want to say... You know Overwatch is way better, right? Oh, my God. <laughs> Guys, can I just get this, out, get this thought out? I just want to say, I've been playing Dark Souls 2 almost exclusively on the feed and having the time of my life. There you go. It. I never thought. I thought it was gonna be the worst experience ever. It's almost like a, I'm yeah. really enjoying playing Dark Souls two on the feed. People seem to enjoy watching me play Dark Souls two in the feed. I'll probably be playing Dark Souls two on the feed until I finish that game, which have, will probably be in like six months. Have you gone down the well yet? 
No, I haven't. Mm. I, I mm-hmm. avoided that because you tricked me the first time. I didn't trick you. Yeah, yeah, a little really bit. Good. It was really good. But uh, so I just beat the uh, dragon dragon rider. Is that what it's? Yep. yep. And then mm-hmm. I went down, and I'm in the uh, I'm in this the, 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 the fucking pirate ship yeah. area, oh, right. um, which is fuck that place. Yeah. Uh, but That's man, not the worst. No, I'm, I'm, I'm having a, I'm having a great time. What's up, Brad? Yeah, we should probably take a break. Well, can I yeah. finish yeah, talking wait, about sorry. what I'm talking about? Sorry. I don't even. I, sorry. We, we went off on like four tangents. I said I wanted to quickly talk about Dark Souls. All right, tell us about Dark Souls. So Dark Souls 3, yes, so far what I have been playing is just more Dark Souls. Wonderful, let's take a break. I'm just kidding. But it's been a while since I've done that. I've, I, I've, I've always loved Souls games, but I've never been one to, you know, play them four, five, six, seven times. I'll play each one once. Yeah, and well, maybe like a normal nowadays, right? you know, Maybe a little new game plus just to mess around. Uh, but uh, so far what I've been playing, I've been really enjoying I'm definitely going to keep playing it. Uh, once again, the only reason I didn't play it when it came out was because I bought it for PC because my PC was well above the minimum requirements. Which apparently were not the minimum requirements. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, so it's 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 something that I've been playing. I haven't played enough that I want to have a big conversation about it yet because I'm still in the first area. I've only beaten two bosses so far, so I'm not that far. How many tries? Uh, so no. the first no. one... Hold on, no, hold on. No, the, 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 so when I, when I played it on my old PC... I had gotten up to the first bonfire. That's where I stopped, just because I realized I couldn't play it. And that's right before the first boss that you beat on your first try, Brad. Remember? I don't know. Because the because of the glitches and whatever. Oh shut the fuck up. <laughs> the but, memory leak. The memory Boom. Leak. Does that still exist in Dark Souls Three? I'm only sure in your game. Oh, only in my game. Yeah. <laughs> but no. So I when I when I got my new PC, I booted it up and I got to that boss. I had just finished playing Witcher. And I pressed X so many times to attack. I kept using my Estus. Why isn't my attack working? And so I you go in for an attack and you're like, ah! No, seriously. Like, I wish I would have been recording because so many times I would run up and then drink an Estus. Hey, here's a quick... Is adaptability still a thing in Dark Souls no. 3? No, it's not. Because that is bullshit Dark Souls Just give it up to like 20 and, and forget about People it. People have been telling me to ignore it completely. It's still at like 4. Yeah. It takes me nobody, like 10 minutes to drink an Estus. Is. Nobody knows It's what not it is. that big of a deal. Uh, but, but can... yeah, and so the first boss... Uh, and then once I, I left him after I died and I fought a bunch of enemies, relearned how to play a Dark Souls game, and then when I beat him my first, so second try, I guess. Mm-hmm. I, su- I consider it my first since I was playing Dark Souls with, with uh, Witcher, Witcher controls. controls. Mm. Uh, but yeah, so I mean, uh, it's, it's once again, it's, it's more Souls, and I, that's why I like you it. Know what? And I'm it's Souls good. I mean, good. it's yeah. surprise, surprise, a really good I will say game. that I was curious. I'm like, you know, this game's been out for what, two, a month, two months, two however months. long? Uh, I, I, put, I threw down a soap sign to see if anybody would summon me. If any, there's anyone near my level, and somebody did within 30 seconds, and he ran up and slashed his sword at me, and then kicked me out of his game, and I was like, "What? You're not the one." <laughs> so, um, just real. So one, I forgot. I keep forgetting to mention like Dark Souls 2 that I'm playing. Mm-hmm. I'm actually playing the PS4 edition, which is the um, Scholar, of, Scholar the of the First Sin. Sin. Yep, that is a really good. Like it's a it's a really good port. That's what it, I've heard. Yes, yeah. no it, duh. Shut your mouth. <laughs> it's it's easy <laughs> to port baby games. It's go oh, fuck yourself. <laughs> well, it looks it looks and runs beautifully. Well, I mean, when you take iffy programming and throw raw power at it, surprise, surprise, games run better. And and they've oh. they've moved a lot of stuff around. Like there are enemies that weren't there before. Oh, there yeah, places. That's true. Like they changed a lot. I, yeah. I I have noticed so many things just from the short period of time I played the first time to where up to Scholar of the First Edition. I've noticed so many things they've added and moved around and changed, and it's just cool. Because the first time I played it, I played on. Let's so take a break. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, time to take a break. Um, once again, just a quick reminder: if you have any, if you're listening to this at home and you have any thoughts on anything that we just talked about, be sure to leave us a comment on the post for this podcast on the site at fourplayernetwork.com. And we'll address them at the beginning of next podcast. We're going to take a quick break. When we come back, we will talk about a few more games. And we'll do community and all that good stuff. Don't go anywhere. Welcome back to the show, everybody. We have a couple more games to talk about, just real quick. Um, yeah, real quickly. I, we're not gonna have an overlay for this, but I just want to say, I've been playing my Vita. 
Mm. I, I, I bought Odin Sphere. And oh, I really? Odin Sphere on the, on, as, I didn't get as much time uh, to play I've it. I've been playing like, a ton of it, too. It's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. Um, it's the it's I just weirdest say, shit. It is the weirdest fucking like world structure. Oh yeah. Ever. Mm. It's weird. It's so. I don't even know how to explain it. You have. It's almost. You know I can't explain it. It's. Okay. All the levels are set up like rings. Okay. And you you so they loop, and the exits you you just run in a straight line, but you're really running around a loop, and okay. then you'll eventually pass a door that lets you move into another branch of that level. It's so, it, it's almost like. So it's like a spiral. No, it's more like the sphere grid in like Final Fantasy X. Okay. I don't know, but it's the map. Okay. Yeah, I, they get more complex and bigger too. Uh, what? It, 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 it's it's just it's a weird way to do rooms, I guess. Like if, if yeah. I and by know. the way, the Vita. For anyone wondering about the Vita version versus the PS4 version, it runs super smooth. Super clean. Yeah. It is a damn good portable game, and it controls beautifully on the Vita. Uh, you know, I felt weird buying a Vita game in general, but and I kind of would have liked to play it on. You just walked into a store. I will purchase this Vita game. No, I ordered it on Amazon. Yeah, <laughs> but uh, it, it, it's it's a great. I'm going to be playing more of it. It's definitely an awesome. I'm on the second game. character now, and how long is each so campaign? So fucking rad to play. You're in for a, a, a ride because it's they're long. I mean, I think the Valkyrie took me like 12 hours. And now I'm it's on like, second character. You mean Gwendolyn? Gwendolyn. Yeah. Wow. And now uh, there's five characters. What the fuck? Okay. But well, they all have their own unique stories. Um, and it's pretty good. I saw and they I'm interconnect. The, and yeah, stuff. and that's all I'm going to say. It's 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 damn good. Anyways, uh, Brad, you had another game that you wanted to briefly uh, talk about? Yeah. Uh, one of the, surpri- I think at the time, surprise announcements of e- at the Ubisoft press conference was, hey, we're doing a new Trials game. Yeah. It's a crossover with... Far Cry Blood Dragon, and it's out now. No. Yeah, that kind of came <laughs> so, out of nowhere. Wasn't that well? No, wasn't that rumored for a while? I think I, maybe, feel like I, I knew about that before E3, but I didn't. Maybe, I didn't maybe. think it was actually going to happen. Um, I so I love Trials. I mean, I bought every, all ever since Trials HD. I bought them all day one because yeah, I games. fucking love Inclu- Trials, including you this know, one, right? I use I used to I used to uh, off to Trials. Like I, I've I've long con- uh, wondered about like hey, what what games just are the best feeling games of all time? Like 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 this game just pure game feel and control. It's just a joy to play. Just just p- the act of playing and controlling it is the best, you know. Yeah. And and one of the first games on that short list for me was Trials HD. Because I mean, I just love fucking Trials games, man. So I bought this right away. That would be a really interesting top five, by the way. No, I, oh yeah, I had th- thought about doing it plenty of times. Um, so yeah, I bought it because I love Trials. This game does not look very smooth. Uh, <laughs> like no, like that momentum seems to be missing. Oh well, well, I think it's just the level he's yeah, playing. Yeah, that's just the slow one playing. It's weird. The whole game is very strange. I'm using a new mechanic. That's a grappling hook, which is actually one of the better new ideas. In this game, I'm just really bad at it in this level for some reason, just because the way these jumps are kind of awkward. Um, but um, also, how does that even work? Like, uh, it's a grappling hook. This on game, your bike? yeah. This not? game fucking sucks. It's like a tow hook. This game. Fucking this game fucking sucks, dude. Like, if you were to ask me, like, if you seriously were to ask me to make like a top ten of last generation, Trials HD would probably be on that list. With maybe like one or two other indie games, you know, like that's how much I love Trials HD, honestly. Um, this, and you know what, I thought Evolution was a little bit less awesome than Trials HD, but still really fucking great. And I had some problems with Fusion, but you know, the core of playing Trials is still so good. I still had a lot of fun with Fusion. This is things a fucking disaster. And it's in a, in a moment, I'm gonna beat this fucking level, and Not you're gonna see moment. why this game fucking sucks. Not in a moment. Oh, well, I told Chris to skip ahead in this footage. I, I think we always tell Chris to skip ahead. He never does. He doesn't listen. He, yeah, he never does. Oh, he did. He did. He did. Um, or maybe Brad just gave the wrong timestamp. So a large <laughs> portion of uh, this game is actually large portions of this game. Um, this is not really okay. So all the, first of all, all the blood dragon stuff in this game is fucking terrible. Like it's one of those games that wants to be like funny. not the intentional terrible like, that is. Well, that, I mean, honestly, I didn't think Far Cry Blood Dragon was as funny as some people made it out to be uh, in the first that's place. A shame. It got kind of like 
old. Brad's and, an adult. Well, I mean, I don't, <laughs> honestly, I, I played like an hour, not even an hour of that game before I got kind of oh, got man, sick of that it. That game is so good, though. Okay, I mean, <laughs> to teach her, I really like Far Cry 3. I just, the vibe of Blood Dragon I wasn't feeling. I also didn't like how everything was real dark um, and kind of hard to see for me, but. Um, yeah, see, he's old. His eyes, his eyesight's going. <laughs> but like, oh hey, references, fucking Big Bang Theory, whatever. The, the the point is like this game is making lots of jokes and they're really bad. They're really fucking terrible. It, so, okay. Trials is an amazing piece of like tech. It's a great fucking video game. But at some point, Red Links thought that they were really fucking funny. You know, they started doing goofier intros and stuff mm -hmm. and making their games jokier. And like so, somehow Suddenly people they thought they were people were perpe perpetuating this thing that. That they that they're a funny studio that should be doing goofy things. Remember when they came on the Ubisoft press conference and they were wearing like silly outfits and yeah. like fucking. That like, was cringe. Yeah, that was that's this whole fucking that, game. That but like the cringe. like I could get over like the stupid fucking cutscenes and the setup, you know, because on paper it's actually sounded like a great idea to me. But in practice, you spend. I'm sorry. Here, I think I'm about to beat this. Yeah, level. you are. You beat it here. Like the gameplay of this game sucks because you're only. Riding a fucking dirt bike like half the time if that there are levels that you play on foot On foot running around shooting a gun at soldiers Like like imagine like the worst fucking shadow complex <laughs> That you can imagine and it controls like shit So a game that I consider to be one of the best feeling video games of all time Becomes one of the worst controlling feeling g shit games like once it's on foot and like it's okay Right cuz it's funny cuz they made it on foot sequence listen motherfuckers like y you might think it's funny But at least make it not fucking suck there was a series uh, on the on, on like PlayStation and Vita and PSP called Velocity, and that was just yeah. a straight up space shooter, oh, right? So good. But eventually they're like, oh fuck it, we're gonna do on foot segments. But they made sure that the on foot segments were, 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 were just as fun and fast and like felt as good as as the the space, you know, stuff. Velocity and, and it worked. Is one of my favorite games. Of, not last year, the yeah, it worked. It worked great, you know. So so don't like. I know you want to make this fucking joke. I know you maybe want some fucking variety, but it sucks. What happened is like they did that that the ability to let users create their own levels, like Little Big Planet. A lot of crazy stuff started happening. Like I made the FPS out of trials, and like you know what? That's kind of cool as this novel thing that maybe you like play once or you watch a video on YouTube. Like I can't believe this guy made a fucking calculator. But you know what? You don't want to do your fucking taxes with your Little Big Planet calculator. It's just this stupid novel thing that you admire someone who had way too much fucking time, you know, that they did. But but these people. At Red Links thought that like no, that's fun. That's great. Let's make a whole game out of the stupid shit You can make in the level editor and it ends up being a fucking disaster and it's not just these on foot sec sequences There's like other fucking vehicles and 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 weird Stupid like here's this fucking thing which you know isn't a bad idea But I, I the se it? the sequence that I'm in is like terrible like platforming. What is it? It's, oh, it's like, like a little those, remote, like yeah, it's, it's like, like a remote one of those RC car. cars that can you, flip that can't over, crash, right? Like, and it was cool. Oh, the those first, were the coolest when those came out. The first level I played was great because it couldn't crash, and you started doing crazy stuff. But then they started introducing fucking hazards and shit, and it becomes a garbage fucking platformer. Like uh, we'll probably not get that far, um, but later yeah, on, dying, Brad, you can't touch fire the fire. Button. Later you're not on, to touch it. That's bad. You're a fucking jetpack, dude. And, the, and they and again, it's not that it controls poorly. It's that you know they start introducing all these annoying hazards. Like it still wants to be annoying and challenging, but it doesn't control like the brilliant dirt bike gameplay does that put this fucking game on the map. They think they can get away with being this goofy shit because they have the Blood Dragon main uh, 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 name. And instead, what happened is they just made a bad fucking video game, uh, which is sad and tragic. And and you know I would have. You know, it's just f frustrating, you know? They're doing it for the lulls and they made a bad fucking video game. And you know what? That's why maybe you shouldn't just... Do it for the lulls? Just... <laughs> You know, it's the, it the age-old thing, like, don't make the joke that you're doing this thing and still do the thing because that like thing Like Jurassic sucks. World! Uh, okay. 
Well, well, I, well, well yeah. I'm, I'm talking about when a game like like makes fun of. What the f- you're what? fucking screaming. Like you're he, making it peak is what I'm saying. Sorry, I was trying not to say it verbally. When it, when a game like like makes fun of like turret sequences and then does a turret sequence, you know, like mm-hmm. that's bad design. I give up here because it's so fucking frustrating and annoying. And like this is coming from the person who once spent like four hours to do a single jump in Trials HD. Man, get good, son. I can't in one believe, sitting. I, I, are you <laughs> actually, that, those games get very fucking good. Are you good. actually planning on finishing Brad. this then? Because it seems I don't like you're not really know. enjoying yourself at all. No, it's stupid. Look, look. I, I'm just starting random levels and having no idea what I'm going to get. What am I watching? It's like the Mako. This looks like... But it's funny, right? Because there's also lots of, like, dialogue and shit which repeats itself when you, like, fuck up. Which, hey, it's a Trials game. You're going to restart a goddamn jump. That's you get to the hear worst. the same fucking bullshit again. And it's not funny. So that, that that's one of the problems I have with games like that. Like... What? You know, in any type of game where you're doing something over and over, this, you know, Joe Danger, that kind of stuff, when when you know the player's going to be dying over and over and over again, when you start doing that kind of like, oh, you can do better than this, like that kind of over voiceover shit, no, that's not fucking cool. That gets annoying as shit. <gasps> oh, that doesn't snap. Look very fun. I've got no okay. It's just, it's so disappointing. And I would have never thought that. I mean, from I mean, Fusion had a t- touch of this stuff when they introduced like tricks, you know. To be like, to, this probably doesn't help much, but like, think of it this way, you know, this time last week you didn't even know this game existed, <laughs> and then it was just like, oh, Trials game is out. Well, and you it know, sucks. it's still fucking Red Links, you know. Right? Yeah, that's true. It's true, but it's not like you were anticipating this for months and then it came out. But and it sucked. doesn't fucking matter. I- I- imagine you like a uh, Silent Hill game came out of nowhere. And it was fucking garbage. You're like, you weren't expecting it. Well, I guess it's a little like different. But, but what's some bullshit you like uh, that that isn't gone forever? Alan Wake. I mean, imagine if a new Alan Wake game came out just randomly and it was fucking atrocious. And you're like, well, that's the new Alan Wake game that it's like I didn't Alan think was going to come out. Racing. Yeah. <laughs> By the way, there is straight up that Alan Wake is in Quantum Break. Like, straight up. Like, like in, character? No, oh, well, not God. like, uh, they find, like, uh, you know the, the TVs from Alan Wake with the Night Spring stuff? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, those are in Quantum Break, mm-hmm. and there are books written by Alan Wake all over the place. Oh, like, God. Keep rolling this footage for, you know, like, this five more, uh, like, hours? 15 more seconds or whatever until that next level starts. Just, I'm just choosing random levels. I'm, I'm not, like, trying to choose the ones that are not on a dirt bike. I'm just going to the next levels and this is what i fucking get like that it's a goddamn travesty but hey it's funny right what no, jetpack it's not funny it's the jetpack <laughs> it's not funny wait is the jetpack cool no i mean like, like you know what at first i was like yeah this doesn't control that bad but they start introducing like annoying like like hazards and it, and it becomes frustrating because you put up with it in trials because it's fun to control that dirt bike and you feel yourself getting better. Yeah, you can. I don't want to get better at this. The, this the, is retar- the thing with trials no. is, is you're oh, on the org. same vehicle the entire time, so you're constantly getting better at knowing when to wow. tilt and when to pull back and when to you know pull the throttle and when to hit the brake. And so you you get to know that vehicle. But in something like this, it looks like you're, you're changing constantly it changing seconds. it. Yeah. yeah. It's a real fucking the skill, too. You watch measures. some of the best people in the world at trials, and yeah. it's like fucking inspiring. It's like how in the god. How did you do this? Yeah. The fail messages are Terrible. your mom and what was, what was oh what was the one that just popped it's up? Like they, it's like they it's like they hired so's your face. It's like they like, hired an intern to write fail messages and they're not very good. Yeah. At all. It's um, like they had hired an intern to make this stupid fucking game. Can we talk about something more positive? Sure. There's another game you've been playing that oh, me. Yeah, I thought you were going to talk about Sunset Overdrive. Oh, I wasn't going to talk about it. Oh. He, didn't he talk about that a little while Wait, ago? Wait, oh. if I'm hooking up my Xbox One to play Quantum Break, should I play Sunset Overdrive? If you yes. Have it, yeah. you have it? Why not? I'll say this. I really wasn't feeling... Give me one minute. <laughs> okay, I really go. wasn't feeling Sunset Overdrive at first, but I, I played a hel- more healthy amount of it since E3 because I'm kind of hyped for the new Spider-Man, Insomniac. This is the closest thing that Insomniac has done to maybe a new, a new Spider-Man game. You know, the closest thing that they've gotten to this. So I was like, you know, I have it. I have this X one. I'm going to give it a shot. 
you, I really felt like I was kind of fumbling early on with the controls. I just wasn't feeling it. Yep. But the more you play it, the more it just you just start to get better at it because you have to do it so much. And when you're finally like zipping around the city and you, you feel like you're getting good at it without stumbling and falling and you finally get that air dash, like it starts to feel pretty good. You know, getting around the city and like some of the actual like missions you do in like boss fights, like they're pretty crazy and out there. You know, if if something like Watch Dogs can be knocked for like being like, oh, I've seen this shit before. Oh, it's just kind of a generic GTA game with a little bit of hacking. Like this game is starting to feel a little unique and fresh. I, I, I'm gonna probably gonna keep playing. And it, I, it's, I, I, it's I just, that's a game cool. I've always wanted to go back and play as well because I do have it. It came with my Xbox. Um, and I just I keep thinking about it. it. It it's been a while. I remember I seem to remember it being pretty funny. Uh, yeah. Well, the like at first it's a little cringy, but even the personality starts to grow on you a little bit. Um, you know the goofs, the main character. You know it, I feel like it's trying to be a little Saints Row. Yeah. Um, and and you know your character will never be as good as the boss, but yeah. you know she's still pretty pretty funny and. and and some of the other characters, they just, they just start to grow on you. Kind of like Saints Row characters. Everyone's kind of annoying at first in those games, but yeah. you spend more time with them, and you're like, you know, it's the lovable kind of annoying, you know? Yep. Uh, cool. What, are, there, are there any other games? Anybody? Mm -hmm. Anybody? Crazy? I played a bunch of Overwatch. Yeah? So They're still treating you well? Yeah, except that McCree nerf kind of took the wind out of my sails. Don't play McCree. Well, I like McCree. But play a chick. I do. I play D.Va a lot. I mean, you're trying to get customization, like, items and stuff, right? Yeah, but it Isn't that just better when it's a woman? Well, yeah, but what you <laughs> unlock has nothing to do with who you're playing. What? Yeah. It's all just random stuff that you get. Oh. Uh, well, hey, they have you to make play, money. You play whoever the situation demands that yeah. you play. Okay? Okay. That and I also booted up Advance Wars again. Turns out that game's still pretty good. It is. It's great. I think. I think you. I think you'll find if you play. I'm playing against. If you play something other than Overwatch, you might find some experiences out there that what's, you enjoy. What's, what's the naval CO? The dude with the belly poking out of his shirt. Drake. Drake. I'm in my first match against him, and fuck that guy. <laughs> and naval stuff is really tricky in the force. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, that's it for us. As we had a lot of games. That's that's it for game impressions. So let's go ahead and. Uh, I have one news topic. Brad has one news topic. It's, it's this is actually really fucking cool. And I played a bunch of it uh, today after I got off work. It's the 20th anniversary of Quake 1 coming mm -hmm. out. C. Which is a really great shooter from id. Um, which id, is also coming back. Which, which owns Machine Games. So Machine Games, or I mean, sorry, Bethesda, which owns id and Machine Games. Um, in, in honor of the 20th anniversary, Machine Games released, they made and released a new episode of Quake. So, like, Quake has... I guess when it came out, I, three episodes, and then a fourth one came out. We're talking about like classic, like Quake. the original Quake. They released a new episode, which is you know like uh, eight levels or something, mm -hmm. eight levels, you know, and a and maybe like a final boss or something, and and so I was playing classic Quake, but it's it is a new episode of Quake. It says straight up. You know, E five M one when you start it up. This is not a mod. This is not you know. It it, it is uh, I guess officially this is because this is this is Bethesda. I mean, it's all the same company now. They've now officially released the next episode of Quake, and it's fun. Quake's fun. It's still fun. Would they, you say Quake is back? Well, the crazy thing is, like, like a game like that holds up remarkably well, which means if you like say have played the new Doom, you could go download. Quake like for free, and and it's still a really fun game. And Machine Games just released m like more of it, like today. That's crazy, and it it's cool. That's not really exactly what I was hoping for from Machine. I mean, well, no, I, I mean, mean, I mean, this is not I like really their next big done. project. No, I mean, I'm it's not, is, I'm not really wish they had Shut done. up, Chris. That's not what I'm saying. No, this is dope as fuck. It I is dope this. as fuck. I'm just saying, like, we were all kind of hoping to see something from Machine Games at E3, and that was This one of those is really sure. disappointing. Well, Fuck you, Chris. <laughs> I'll, tell, I'll tell you this much. This this new uh, episode of Quake is probably going to be a hell, is probably a hell of a lot better than that new Quake thing that's coming out from Bethesda. That was, was oh, ask what's you, it called? I, Quake? Quake Champions? Quake Champions. I was going to ask you what you thought they of that. They can't do that. There's already Unreal Champions. Well, I, uh, did you look at the developer? Yeah. Just rancid shit. 
that's all they've made is rants and shit. Uh, we looked it up over. We they made right? Inversion. Yeah. I can't remember. I remember looking it they up. They made Time Shift. Inversion. Who did they've they They've made hire? worse. They've made worse. There's something they did recently that was such a garbage, garbage game. For Inversion, because that cover sucks. Chris Chris Davis. What was the recent Probably the same like, guy who did game the cover did. for Doom. <laughs> like licensed or something. Anyways, let's let let's move on. There's not really a lot. It's, it's he's not even listening. Yeah, he, is. he sits there every <laughs> oh. week. To Cat gifts. The developer, runs our podcast, and he's <laughs> so the, we're saying. The, hey, the developer, developer of Quake Champions. Why don't you? Why don't you <laughs> control V? Whatever so, you yeah, got. Saber. The I know their name. What was the chat? I bet it's a. I bet it's a cat. I'll gift. look it up. <laughs> we, we, we Chris Davis. We need a list of their of their hot garbage. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> sorry. Um, Let's uh, let's come back to this while he's looking that up. Um, yeah. Because there, it, it, this is the week post E3, which is typically mm-hmm. a pretty slow week. Oh, so yeah. Battle Los Angeles. Oh God. Time shift. Battle Los Angeles. Halo Combat Evolved Anniversary. Oh, R.I.P.D. The game. Go. Oh, that thing is supposed no. to be rancid shit yeah. too. Well, that's because R.I.P.D. The movie was yeah. rancid as well. Um, oh, they, oh, were they? They the, did the Master Chief Collection. And, and that thing was did. a. Complete fucking they disaster. The, uh, they did Halo Online, that fucking they like worked. China only online multiplayer. They worked on the Master oh, Collection. Oh, okay. Well, I'm sure they didn't help much. Sure, probably not. <laughs> oh fuck. Yeah, it is. Uh, it is not a great track record. So, uh. anyways, let's move on. What the fuck? We'll see, we'll talk more about that as we know more about that. I'm sure we can play that at QuakeCon or something. Um, so let's go ahead and just jump. There's not a lot of news. This is the week after E3. There's not a whole lot of, you know, a lot of the exciting stuff that we really want to talk about happened last week. So if you're interested to hear what we think about all the E3 stuff, I would recommend going to listen to our E3 podcasts, which are Definitely. available right now over at fourplayernetwork.com or on iTunes or SoundCloud or any of that good shit. Um, so for now, we're going to jump straight to community. Nolan, do you remember how to do community? It's been a while. I'm pretty sure you start with the community. Brad tried to do a, a poor rendition of your, commu- your Brad community balls. song. <laughs> we love our community. I don't think Nolan's is that good either. I think we really need to, to oh, like. You're lucky your knee was. We there. we need to like get together on a weekend and like do a like an acapella like oh, rehearsal shit. thing. We should do that for community. Sure, let's do that. I'm. And then we'll have those little hats that would pull out from behind the couch. Oh, yeah, one of those little one of those little tuning keys. Dude, I'm all for this. I have, is this an idea? I sure. I want to do that. Someone write that down. Uh, so first I'm off, I'm not gonna write uh, it down. It is it is June. It is uh, for a little while longer. So our support of the month is still Urban Hitman. Urban Hitman. Uh, his game of choice was Mountain Blade Warband. N- incorrect. Uh, it was. Um, I'm playing it tomorrow. <laughs> why can I not fucking? Oh, don't starve. Don't starve. I don't know why. I just could. Complete um, blank on that. Did you Give find me. a new co-op partner? Uh, Crispy might join me. I would join Crispy. you. I, I, I'm going to be at work until oh, 2. I, I would also problem. join you, except I am going to be getting my breaks done. I'm not going to even be up to my house until probably like 5 in the That's evening. Fine. That's fine. That's fine. Yeah. Are we yeah. planning on you're doing during the day? Are we planning on doing the Rocket League? Wait, you're playing during the day? I have, I'm He's playing tomorrow weird. night. Oh. I can't. I'm not free tomorrow night. Okay. Is someone cast? I will cast if need be, but I won't. Okay, so we'll figure something out. <laughs> More Anyways. quantum break tomorrow this is, night. This is perfect. This is right. perfect podcast this is, conversation for this section of the podcast. People as well. like to see this, this behind is, the this scenes. Is a little shit. Behind the scenes extra. You don't even yeah. have to be a patron. A bonus. For Brad, I highly doubt he would be playing Quantum Break tomorrow. He would probably be playing Rocket League since our flag just got put in the game. Woo! It finally happened. It so did. Yes. Oh, it's oh, and I actually I did cast this. Play earlier. some basketball. Earlier, in the, earlier basketball. in the week, I played basketball yeah, and yeah. hockey. I don't care for the basketball. Uh, with <laughs> everyone wearing, uh, rocking the four P flags. Chrissy, do you want to play? With, fucking great. Play Rocket League tomorrow night. Maybe. Sure. Somewhere maybe. Night. Sure. We're gonna. He wants to play Overwatch tomorrow night. <laughs> <laughs> so how about we do can a they, community can night? Can they with put Overwatch? a four player flag in Overwatch? Uh, all right. So moving on, we have a few new patrons since our last podcast. Four P flag is first in the list. Yes, because they they add them in. Yeah, they yeah, add them in. No, 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 they, so when you open the community section, yeah. boom. Yeah, ours is the first one there. Four player. That is network. dope. Yeah. And people are like, "Who the fuck is that?" <laughs> <laughs> and so hey, then they look into us and look find out how much they love us. Maybe they'll All right, so new patrons since our last podcast. David C. Hello, David. Thank you. Uh, next one is Sebastian. Sebastian. 
Sebastian. Uh, and then we have uh, Sebastian. Cr- Chris M. Isn't Sebastian from that, that movie Cruel Intentions? No, sure. he's from the movie The Little Mermaid. <laughs> and then Chris M. are our new patrons. Thank you to all three of you. You guys rock. Never ending story. Thank you. Never Can we Sebastian's story. out there? All right. So. Um, what do you mean? So it's time for questions. Yeah. I thought like, there was something I was going to insert there, and I just lost it. Whatever. Don't. No, you got to. You got to ask before you do that, Nick. Sorry, I'm sorry. Uh, okay, so uh, questions from our patrons this week. Sorry, it like unloaded itself. Uh, <laughs> first, first question this week comes from. Uh, God damn it. Uh, Zerby. 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 <laughs> Another year of recasting for established characters is happening. Some of the excuses given have been commented on by actors being busy. Do you actually believe this? If that was the case, would Wait, you be happy with waiting as long as possible to get the right actor? I have no idea what the fuck you're talking about, Zerby. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. wait. What the, the top? fuck I, are you talking I about? Need, I need some... Like Christopher Judge taking over Kratos? Oh, so we're talking about video games. I guess so. Yeah, Wait, are you talking about recasting Spider-Man? I don't know. Yeah, I think that new kid did a pretty good job. Yeah. Wait, re- Wait. He said, another year of recasting for established characters is happening. Some of the excuses given have been commented on by the actor being busy. Do you actually believe this? If that was the case, would you be happy with waiting as long as possible to get the right actor? I think he might be commenting on the fact that, like, you know, like... David Hayter was recast in the game that came out in you know, Metal Gear from last year and stuff like that. Yeah. He's just talking about how it, th- this is not an uncommon thing. Recasting an, like, an established character's voice actor because the actor is busy. And his question was, do you believe that's the case and would you rather wait as long as I think possible? It is I, very, st- I think it is very rarely done for, for um, creative reasons. I think it is usually out of necessity, whether it's budget reasons. Yeah. Well, no, I think I think the actor being busy is definitely something that happens. I mean, like, act- part of actors o- are busy. Often actors will sign a contract. You know, they'll make a game, and then four years later they make the sequel, but the actors, they, they haven't just been waiting you, for that sequel to come out. They, know they're doing like, other shit. There's like 12 people who do voice acting for video games. <laughs> there's more than that. <laughs> I know, I, but it's such a small community. Like, I'm going to say this. I, I'd still be happily waiting for Metal Gear Solid Five. If it was David Hayter. Oh, come on. David Hayter wasn't going to save that game. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> he would have saved all, Snake. He would have been a hell of a lot better than Jack Bauer. It's, Secondly, it's not, there would be it's way... not so much that Jack Bauer was voicing Snake. It's that Snake doesn't have any fucking That's lines my, in the game. I think exactly. It's I think it's but David Hayter... So you, be, what you're saying is you just... Guys, wish down. that Metal Gear Solid Five was a different game. No, but I'm saying if David Hayter was still voicing Snake, it would be a different game. I think. Hold on, because they, they could afford to hold pay on. The because we're talking about this now. Yes, there was a lot of limitations in Metal Gear Solid Five because they had to work around what's his face, uh, Kiefer, Kiefer Sutherland, Sutherland. Yeah. because that he had they had to pay him so much and he probably had limited time to do shit. David Hayter is a voice actor; that is what he does. Mm-hmm. He would have spent night and day in that sound booth recording uh, Snake lines, ad libbing shit, redoing shit. Kiefer Sutherland probably got the script, went in there. I I'm Solid Snake. Can I go now? That's probably what happened with him. I mean, and it was so yes, than I that, do. But... I'm not saying. I mean, hold yeah. on, I'm not saying Metal Gear Solid Five would have been the best Metal Gear Solid game, uh, story wise and stuff like that. Yes, some of the problems of the game were story, plot p- points that could not have been fixed by just changing the voice actor. But yes, I do think it would have been a much better game had David Hayter voice Solid Snake. But this is also not a question about David Hayter. If if uh, judging by. But judging by what you're saying, that you know the game would have been completely different if David Hayter was cast as Snake, sure. But I mean, if you're just saying David Hayter go in and read the exact same lines that sure that Kiefer Sutherland did, that no, that's I don't Who think that, cares that would not that have point. made that game like, better. I'm just saying that I don't think that's what would have. I happened. mean, I feel like that that is more in the realm of the discussion we're having, not like how how like. Let's, let's think of other examples. Let's think from... of other examples. Then Sam Fisher was recently recast. Oh yeah, for about Blacklist that. Yeah. and for Conviction, um, which to a lot but of see, people was a big deal. Uh, but see, that wouldn't have been a different game just with him voice acting. While Metal Gear Solid is a yes. different situation entirely. Um, but uh, you know, Kratos and God. And You're the new so God. sure. You're so sure. I mean, uh, just empirically, you know. I mean, Empi- 
This is not. Let's stop talking about Metal Gear Solid Five. Has been mentioned more than enough. We are not going to say a single. We are not going to say a single word about Metal Gear Solid Five from this point on in this podcast. Let's talk about Kratos for God of War. Yes, there's a new God of War coming. Yes, that has been confirmed. Not the same actor. It doesn't sound like him. So, (laughs) Um, do we care? Not really. Like honestly, (laughs) not at all. Like. Kratos is an iconic character, but at the same time, I don't not think necessarily. Any of that... Not necessarily for his voice. Yeah, yeah. I, don't I think mean, any I of that... think I think his his persona and his actions are what we know him for, not his voice. You know, sometimes I forget that he even speaks. Yeah, he's lots of grunts. So, um, I I, I don't it's know. A, it's a hard question to really answer because every situation is a little bit different. Mm-hmm. And you know, in some situations, it's going to be a much larger backlash. For I, I think actor. one one of Zerby's like his like kind of final question was: do you, Would you rather wait until that actor can retake that role? Like, would you want to wait years for a game to get delayed so no, that because actor... games already take too fucking long? Yeah, and so no, I I, I would. I, I would, for, first off, I'm fine with people getting recasted because there are issues. You know, like I said, actors have other jobs that, you know, they sign a contract, which means they have to do this other thing. They can't maybe take the time like, to let's record think about something. Uncharted 4 for and, a second. What if, what if, mm-hmm. um, help me out. Nolan North. Nolan North. Mm-hmm. What if he, for whatever reason, wasn't available? Mm-hmm. Would you want to wait two or three more years to get Uncharted 4? The, if it was the exact same game that they just found someone that sounded a little bit like or maybe they just had Troy Baker step in Troy Baker do, does a pretty good Nolan <laughs> Troy Baker yeah what if Troy Baker had stepped in and done so, it no, so hold on so while it, I think it would be a, a, a situation where fans would be outraged because that's the internet it, no but no it's not it's not but that's what I'm saying like that is a character we the the reason people love Uncharted isn't necessarily for the shooting, it's it's because they love Nathan Drake. Yeah, and I think that's like a situation where you're almost recasting like an actor on a TV show to that point. Yeah. So once again, it does depend on the game. I think. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, once it's a it's a case by case basis. Uh, would you want to rate four years for a game or something? No, I mean you wouldn't want to. But yeah, you would hope that if they were to recast an actor, they would not get someone that fucking half asses the job. The, the aliens are from the moon or whatever. Without knowing, let's that hope. Uh, whoa, whoa, whoa. Norman Reedus is a little. Uh, I don't know how his voice acting skills are, so maybe he'll be less busy. Let's oh, just hope yeah. he's less busy. All right, moving on. Next, next question from Burnsy. What game show would you like to be on? Oh God, Price that is, is right. see that that implies that I watch game shows. And... Price is right. Price no, is right. hands down. Double dare. Price Can I say wrong, who wants to be bitch. a millionaire? Sure, I don't fun. know if you're smart enough. Sure. <laughs> Thanks, Nolan. Thanks. You can say whatever you want. Those yeah. are boring ones. Uh, uh, what about the Price Is Right? Is a boring game show. Have you ever watched a fucking minute of it? Legend. Of what about the that? Hidden Temple. Thank you. Yeah. Legend of the Hidden Temple. I was about to say, does think, that count? Brad, I think you're a little old for that. I don't think you'd make it across the moat. <laughs> what I'm saying is, like, that's one where you have a good time. No, yeah, that is true. And, and then, uh, w- w- right. was, what was... What the th- fuck is your problem with The Price is Right? <laughs> it's a fine show, but, like, if your excitement 70. is all Dude, fainted. No. Man. no, 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 no. If we're talking about you get to go on one game show in your life... What game show is it? What was... It's what, a fucking Price is what, Right. What was the show? Hands fucking what, what, what down. What about Wheel show? of Fortune? What was the show with the aggro, <laughs> Craig? That was, that was Guts. Go, gu, guts? Guts yeah. and guts. Global Guts. Yeah, Global Guts. Family Feud. Uh, with, uh, dude, there's a few Japanese game shows that get pretty fucking fun. I would have loved to have been on Takeshi's Castle. I thought you were say to catch a predator. What? <laughs> That's, that's not a game that's show, That's not Nick. a game show, Nick. Do you think that's a game show? <laughs> that's not a game, Nick. <laughs> The you realize right here. You realize <laughs> after that show's over, those people go to jail. Yes. <laughs> they don't go home with a the new final car. challenge of outrunning the cops. That's they, why I was a little they, surprised. They didn't always though. Wasn't that a big part of the why I that show so. doesn't I, exist I think anymore? So, yeah. yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Oh, uh, but man. no. Uh, yeah. Takeshi's. Oh, Takeshi's I was Castle, watching some of that fairly recently. Which, which some of you might know as MXC. Yeah. Yeah. Most extreme yeah, elimination yeah, challenge. Yeah, yeah. I think that would have been a fun show to be on, especially yeah. just because it was it was Japan in the early '90s when they didn't give a fuck if you broke your back on their show. <laughs> like you signed a waiver, uh, like, and they tried to. That's what they tried to do with what was that show? Warped was that what it was called? Warped. Warped. Wa- wipeout. Wipeout. Wipe that out. was the show. They tried to redo to like to catch these casual in America, weird. but they made it so lame, fucking stupid that like it just wasn't fun. You mean because it was safer? Yeah. <laughs> 
<laughs> well, it was. I mean, some people, some people got like pretty fucking <laughs> jacked on, on, on Wipeout, but like <gasps> American through, Gladiators, sitting oh. through all the commentary, the tennis ball challenge. Are those really game shows at this point? Sitting through all of that commentary to get it was to the good bad. stuff yeah. was it's bad. horrifying. Yeah, do American horrifying. Gladiators. The one where you like kept assault the ball, ball in the in the thing. The best, the best one was assault. Well, the yeah. tennis balls, right? Yeah, yeah. Of where course. you're like dodging the fucking. Of course, it's a fucking video game. Of course, it's yeah. the uh, next all right. question uh, from Sean. Have you ever bought a game based off of a crappy description of it by someone else? How did that turn out for you? By a crappy. A crappy. What do you mean by? Uh, like, just someone describes the game. Hey, this game. Blah 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 blah. And then you somebody go falsely it. represented the game to you. Probably. You it based so I think the problem yes. is this question had to had to have occurred in like maybe the late nineties. No 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 no. This happened to me within the last five years. Oh okay. I played, I played a game on Nick's suggestion. Uh oh. And it was How Singularity. Uh oh. And he was like, "This is so good all the time." It's like Bioshock. Blah, blah, blah. And I played it, and I was like. Okay, this is okay. It's fine. I think, Nick, I, I think back then <laughs> Nick was throwing, tired. I think Nick was throwing around the B word. Which you know what? Which you know what? This is ironic because I just recommended another time travel game to you in this exact it's true. episode. Yeah. It's true. It's true. And and I was definitely Crispy. thinking about saying you're Crispy. Crispy. While you were talking. About. Time shift changed my life. <laughs> but Fuck you. but you did. You got to watch my footage this time when I was talking, telling you about Quantum Break. So it was like I was showing you evidence, right? Right? Well, sure. Okay. Right? <laughs> crispy. God damn it, crispy. crispy. Like, seriously, one of the best shooters I've played, Resistance 2. Play it. Hey, I like Resistance 2. I don't, I don't think there's ever been a game that I've just gone out and bought without looking into it first. Yeah. I usually, yeah. and that's just mainly because I've always been a little bit on the poor side. <laughs> I'm trying to think that, that I usually don't yeah. go and buy a game without actually doing a little research. I bought, into it I bought first. Trials uh, Garbage Fest, whatever it's called, on a whim. Yeah, it wasn't based on a crappy description from. Well, I, one of the reasons I bought it is because E3 based broadcasting. Based on a crappy press conference. <laughs> don't yeah. blame Aisha Tyler for this. <laughs> no, Ubisoft had. A I good met show. Aisha Tyler. She's a Ubisoft delightful had a good lady. Show. Yeah, she is. She's I nice. just, I just meant the their one little portion of the Ubisoft show. Anyway. All right. Next question from the Metal Button. Fuck, Mary, kill. You are Aisha th- Tyler. You are three other four PP co-hosts. Whoa! What? Fuck, Mary, kill. I don't know. I'm <laughs> I'm abstaining. Uh, well, it seems like Crispy's about to go for it. <laughs> okay, so I I have to work backwards. All right? oh, so first of all, Mary. Who am I gonna marry from? We this all know group? you're gonna kill me, you it, dick. It has to be. No offense, Brad, but it has to be. Nick or Nolan because they are both homeowners. They both have. I, I, I'm renting right now. Oh, he's renting. Okay, so it would be Nick because Nick owns a condo. Yeah, yeah he's got not, he's got a lot of built-in equity and not getting fucked. And I feel like he's working on a nest egg for our future. Uh, <laughs> so this is the this is this is the reason Crispy's the only one qualified to answer this question. <laughs> fuck and kill Brad or Nolan. Ooh, Ooh. I think Nolan's getting fucked. This is. Not in chat. Apparently, in chat, everyone's marrying me. It, it's kind of, it's kind of nice. I Wait, mean, so it, what does that mean? What does that say about me? Who do I? Who do I? It comes down to who do I want to have sex with more, <laughs> and then I'll just kill the other person. I actually want to have sex with Nick like, as well. I feel like, I feel like Nolan. <laughs> I feel like Nolan is a very generous, giving lover, but it might also be nice to be with somebody who's taller than, than me. <laughs> So let's just move on. <laughs> oh my god! Plus, you know, I've, Brad's got that wild hair. I just, you know? <laughs> I just look up and I see big bads on the face. Says this is weird. <laughs> <laughs> what do you mean I'm too much for you? What the? <laughs> too much hair? Ah, uh, this is weird. <laughs> All right, I think I think we've given just about as much we, answer as we can promise for this question. <laughs> Have we beaten this one to death? Th- thank you, Crispy, for taking a taking a stab at it. Okay. You know what I mean? See what I did there? Yeah. Uh, all right. Next yeah. question is from David, and it's really long. I didn't have a chance to go over it, but I'm going to try to real quick. Okay. <laughs> Metal Wait, who, Gear Solid who, who Five. Huh? Who asked this? David. The, you said he, we couldn't talk the, about He's it. one of the new uh, patrons. <laughs> new I have the best pillow talk. talk. So. Metal Gear Solid Five: The Phantom Hourglass was, to me, a friend of mine, a stellar installment in the Metal Gear franchise, despite the game feeling awkwardly incomplete. We theorized at work for was hours. Was that a typo or an intentional joke? I don't know. <laughs> 
<laughs> Hold on, I'm still trying to get to it. Sometimes the whole eight hour shift, what the plot was and what we were completing missions, the game, I had joked around by saying something to the extent of, and then a bunch of spoilers. Uh, blah, 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 blah. Let's just skip uh, have you ever theorized uh, anything in a game, movie, book, Final Destination, prediction, etc., that has actually happened or come true? Were you satisfied with your theory being a reality or beating yourself up for it later? See, also, this isn't me hating on Metal Butthole or its ending. Okay. I actually came to terms with it as blah, blah, blah. Uh, Okay, so his question is essentially, have you ever... Uh, predicted a game and been right and or then either oh yeah, he said mo game movie book and been right and either were glad or didn't like that um, so I whenever someone asks me this question mm -hmm. it has, I have been asked this, or I've talked about this um, th this always is the first thing that pops into my head mm -hmm. M. Night Shyamalan's The Village The Village oh yeah I Called, saw that coming I was I remember specifically saying standing in line to watch that movie at midnight when it came out, I was so excited. I was like, this is going to be amazing, as long as it doesn't turn out. And I said it. Yeah. And that Go happened. ahead, just say it. The statute of limitations is up. I was and like, it's also, they yeah, were on the is, moon. Is there a statute of limitations on shitty movies? <laughs> <laughs> you know what? And I was totally enthralled by the village until the plot twist hit. Yeah. I was like, this is great. I'm loving this. And then the exact thing that I said I don't want to happen happened. Happened. I feel like in that situation, that's bad because no, it's bad. Yeah. the whole movie hinges on that one moment working. Correct. Yes. The whole thing is built Crispy, up hold to on. that Wait, one scene. Which M. Night Shyamalan movie did you just describe? Uh, all of them, <laughs> except for maybe, no, all of them. Uh, well, is maybe, Signs really Except like for that? The Last Airbender. No. Dude, oh, yeah, Last Airbender just doesn't work at all. <laughs> it's just a ever, shitty movie. Yeah. Yeah. I liked Science because I didn't see the ending oh, and, of Science coming uh, out. Oh, and, and uh, fucking uh, Unbreakable. 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 Really like I think, that. honestly, Unbreakable and, and Unbreakable. Anything Six up, Sense are like his best movies. Anything up until Science. Is there, right. all, but hold like, hold on. Like, is there anything video game related? Hold on, we're not talking about this. <laughs> like, we're no, not no, devolving no, no, into it. But the point I'm trying to make is when when you're talking about a game or a movie or a story or anything that hinges around one big twist and you call the twist, like... From minute one, that's bad. Yeah. But I feel like there are certain moments, like, I can't even really think of a specific example, but maybe stuff like in A Song of Ice and Fire, mm -hmm. where it's like, I bet this character is going to end up here. And then they go there. Mm -hmm. It feels satisfying because it's like that, it feels like the plot is working the way, like, it feels like I'm on the same page as the author. You know, yeah. I feel yeah. like we, like, I, my, my thoughts and assumptions and idea of this character is in line with what the person who created them thought of that character. Yeah. That can be really gratifying. When it's like one fucking pivot point and you just clock it from a mile out, that's bad. I so, feel like Uncharted 4, I kind of saw a certain aspect coming from like pretty yeah, early on. Yeah, but even then, I think the storytelling in that was still, I feel like it was kind of more of what Crispy is describing where I felt like I was more in you sync were, with You were like, okay, were, yeah, I was right about that. Um, yeah, and he's talking about like, is it like negative kind of almost to an extent? I'm or he, he's saying negative or positive. Is, is, is the fact that it's always like, is the fact that it's catching you completely off guard, it's completely like a total surprise to you always an indicator that it's like a better, like not better right. You know what, not this is, this is kind of, this is, sorry, this is not staying exactly on topic but like well, then don't when I that. thought this was going to happen I th I thought that I had called I I was almost certain that I, had, I was going to predict about? Until Dawn okay and then it turned out to be completely different yeah and yeah. I was like oh shit that was awesome yeah and and Until Dawn does a pretty good job I like, thought that was going to be super transparent so, so, a few different so here if you were to ask my fiance her biggest pet peeve of mine is that Nine times out of ten, I predict stuff that's going to happen in movies and shows, and she fucking hates it because I'm almost always right. Well, then you and be saying them out loud until you've watched them. Usually, I'll write it down on my phone. So just so you can sh see, I was right. I was. Right. <laughs> well, not, not always, not always, but it's kind of like. Uh, and, and I think the problem is it's just because I have consumed so much media, be it books, television, film, games, that nothing's original. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Like, it's very rare that you run into original things nowadays. They're always something like, you know, Simpsons did it. Someone's done it before. And, and, and oh, so, sure. and, and like, there was something in the, in the second to last, if you recall, the second to last episode of Game of Thrones, how, like, the end of the episode ended. Like, I saw that coming. It's stuff like that. Like, uh, there's just, uh, and I said it out loud. And she was like, son of a bitch. Like, because I was right. And it, it's. No, are you 
No. Uh, and uh, so, if you want to ask me after the podcast, I just don't want to talk about it on the podcast. Um, but yeah, so I I very often can see things coming, and that when when a game or movie does something that I couldn't predict, that they kind of or I predicted wrong, I really like it more because it's like you know what I really thought this was going to happen, and that's actually what happened with Uncharted Four was I really thought X Y Z was going to happen, like I had no doubt that's, about I it, mean, and it didn't happen, and I was like, I really like this now because like I think I think nowadays. Because there, it is so much harder to be original because so many things have been done before. Mm-hmm. I think the sign of good writing and storytelling and all that is actually finding ways to convince the viewer or the reader or whatever that it's not going to happen that mm-hmm. way, even if it's going to. Yeah. Like, you could surprise someone by by leading them down the path you, you know they're going to try and – their brain's going to try and go. Yeah. And then surprise them, which is – I know this is kind of a weird jump, but for me, that's one reason, like, horror movies are all the same. Mm-hmm. That's one reason why I've always latched on to, like, the sc- like Scream, like the original Scream. Mm-hmm. Like, the ending to that movie, y- you could have, like, they, your brain goes there almost immediately when you start watching that movie. You start meeting those characters. Yeah. But they do a really good job they of spend the meeting. whole movie making you go, oh, but is it? Yeah. Oh, but and it, is And it? then it is. But, like, okay. that was still super satisfying, right. even though I had kind of called it... But the, the movie's movie. not treating its audience like they're dumb. But no one yeah. expected two killers. At Bro. the time, no. Bro. True. Bro. <laughs> Bro. Statue of limitations, kind of. But I, I, still, I still love those movies. In fact, I went back and watched the show recently. And they all kind of, like... I mean, not all of them, but... All right. Well, we spent a lot of time on they this question. They do pretty question. good. So, uh, David, it was a long-ass question, but it led to a good discussion. Thank you, David. Maybe summarize next time. Uh, <laughs> next question from Michael. You know those creepy slash extreme pop-up ads that appear when you're watching porn? Are you able to fully ignore them, or do you ever tur- or do they ever turn you off what you're streaming at the moment? He's asking a question streaming. about when we're watching porn, and we they start having advertisements on the side of the page for other porn. Man, those, some of those like, ads got good, though, man. Some of them do. Like, sometimes... Some. <laughs> I mean, you, like... Two words for you, though. Like... Ad blocker? Full screen. Oh. Full screen? You can't full screen the ad? <laughs> what no, are you saying? No, I'm saying, no, he's if, saying full if, screen. If, oh. if you're trying to watch porn so and there's like an ad for like make your dick bigger and it's just a giant oh, dick giant or something. Dick oh, full screen the video. Don't you love those. the animation of the dick growing? <laughs> right. <laughs> yeah, dude. <it's, laughs> I'm talking uh, about the ads that are like constantly playing scenes like real quick. Yeah, some of those mm-hmm. good. Those are the best ones. Yeah, but then you know what? You see it and you're like, I can't watch that because you Where know do I find that I one? have to go, yeah. if I want to watch that exact video, I'm going to have to pay for it. But sometimes um, they give you ideas of shit to search for because sometimes you have know, the same old, old hat, you know? It's like, I need, I need some fresh, like, where do you go for fresh porn ideas? Now, I'm not talking about weird <laughs> shit. I'm just talking about a list, a list of, of, like, normal stuff that you might forget about, you know? I guess you could just click on the categories and stuff. Yeah. <laughs> but, but yeah, that, that's, that, most people that's the <laughs> same is, shit, you know? Like a, this is don't just they like a put random buttons? Like, don't most of these streaming sites have, like, a random I don't want a random button, though. That's too scary for that, me. That can go into a dark hole. I mean, <laughs> if you're looking to spice it up. Like. <laughs> I don't want to spice it up. I just want dude, ideas. Dude, I just, want, I just want to reiterate. We talked about this in the pod, one of our E3 podcasts, but, like, one of the, like, I don't one of the saying. best things about E3 this year, to me, was watching... Was people watching at the porn booth at the yeah. VR porn booth, yeah. watching people who had no idea what to do with their hands yeah. <laughs> during, so while, when they know there's like so 80 good. people standing behind them. Yeah, uh, watching VR porn is hilarious. Yep. Crispy's reaction was priceless, even though he was, you know, he, this is just Crispy's personality. I think he would have done it either way, but like it was hilarious. <laughs> him just like watch, I'm watching Crispy, and he's just like, "This is a nice house." <laughs> oh. That's a nice watch. Because he's actually just looking around it. Because you can look around at your char- at yeah. your character. <laughs> your, your avatar. Nick, you realize that's you. Yeah. <laughs> that's your penis. That, that's my dick. Uh, we're gonna, By the way, that is that is in one of the vlogs that we have going up, I'm gonna, which I'm going to try and get up on the site tomorrow. So um, you can watch. Hopefully they turned out good. You can watch both Crispy and myself watch VR porn. <laughs> Yes, they, they did. They did have face condoms. Just, they did. So you did. I still have to, mine. <laughs> I, I put it over my eyes before I go to sleep every night. I, it's the worst blindfold ever. They gave y'all one. 
Yeah. yeah. I didn't have they one. They had a whole stack of I'm them. worried what's on my face. Semen. I got face well, yeah, aids. it's a good thing people don't come through their eyes. <laughs> like, or it's come not, at all. It's, it's, not, not, oh, yeah, it's yeah, not about yeah. that. Yeah, it's right more right about right the right. fact that, I mean, granted, I got the, <sighs> I didn't get the VR they were giving to everyone else. I didn't have the Oculus. They had the, a special chair. Yeah, they had a special one off to the side. I should have gotten up there and just acted like I was getting, like, really motion sick. Just, like, grab onto the table, like, ah, Oh, man. All right, fine. Final question for the evening. Uh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Haraz? Haraz? J E R O Z. Haraz? Jeroz? I don't know. Jero. I know who you're talking about. Jeroz? Jeroz? Uh, you know is there any about. dark, gritty game that you would like to see being rebooted into a more colorful one? Oh, that's a either, good question. Actually. Or either or both in terms of visual presentation or character personality? Hmm. Oh, man. That's a good that's a good question. Some um, dark and gritty reboot into something light, maybe funny. Yeah. Or maybe even Bright, just like a, even even if it's just even if it's just like a like a like a palette swap. Oh, I got it. Batman. Oh yeah. I mean that might be a little difficult. No, let's see some I fucking mean, TV show style Batman, but still have like great fucking mechanics. Yeah. Like sure. sixty six Batman. Yeah. Like Batman sixty six. Why the fuck not? Well, I mean, okay, that's fine. But there are plenty of other like. Like more colorful, like cheery versions of Batman than the Adam West one. Okay, well I don't okay. know. About that. Well, that actually is Cowboy kind of Batman that, that's close to Fuck what it. that's close to what I was gonna say. I heard that. By the way. <laughs> uh, I'm really excited about the new Insomniac Spider-Man game. Yep. Mm-hmm. I kind of wish, if anything, that maybe it was a bit more comic booky than it is. Hmm. You know. What do you mean? I mean, they're definitely chasing like the movie crowd. Yeah. Like this, you know? Like, and like, it comes like, out. Like, like Tobey Maguire. And it Spider-Man. comes out, like, next summer. Well, we don't know. Like, like, even the movie Spider Man games had, like, some really. Like, in Spider Man 2, you fought Mysterio. They did. Not but, Mysterio. But, uh, like, those games never had Mysterio? the same yeah, visual charm yeah. Yeah. that, like, Ultimate Spider Man did. Where it looked like a fucking comic book. Yeah, game. Ultimate oh, Spider Man. That's what you mean. That's what you mean. Everyone brings up cool. Spider Man 2 when talking about Spider Man games, but Ultimate Spider Man for me was all, all has always been my favorite. Yeah. So Ultimate Spider Man is great from like a visual standpoint. Playing as Venom. I was, was dude. Cool. I was really into Ultimate Spider Man when it came out. Oh that man, high so five, good. man. Um, um, trying to think of what else though. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, I would Darth say Zelda, but, but even, off but of even with princess, but they've done that. No, yeah. I think Zelda would be a. Gr- well, I mean, well, Zelda Skyward Zelda's Sword pretty light and goofy. Skyward Sword almost took it to the extreme, even, though. Even Batman, though, like like the visual direction of Telltale's Batman game looks much more interesting, I think, it than, does, than yeah. a lot of like the Arkham. Games. Here's here's an so example. I think this is kind of close, like the Darkness One to the Darkness Two, like Darkness Two is a much more vibrant game. I mean, it's still pretty dark but like it had a completely different art style it was more colorful and i think that made that game way more visually striking oh my god why did we get blurry that was weird um it was it was just a more striking game and i think it felt distinct or different from the original because of that um just looking around like if they were to ever revisit Infamous, like sorry, if Sucker Punch did Infamous, I think although Sucker, the last Infamous game was maybe a little bit brighter. But it's after, after mm-hmm. playing, but, uh, but uh, those like Sunset Overdrive, yeah, in, like, Infamous is a series that could use like a huge injection of personality. But, Takes but, itself like, too yeah, seriously. But, like Brad yeah. makes a good point. Like look at what if you did Infamous but injected some of that that, uh, that uh, Sunset, like Sunset Overdrive. Dude, personality that's what I'm saying. Like like people people are following the whole Hollywood superhero blockbuster when they're making these Hollywood or these superhero games and superhero stories and it's like you, you should be you should be going for the bombast you should be going for the whiz bang like the fucking crazy side of comedy like the, mm. the you should be you should be emulating the material that made us want to make superhero movies to begin with yeah, yeah. you know I mean that's that's what I think about Infamous yeah. no, that's, but, that's a good point mm. that is a good point I'm just... I think we got some good answers yeah, in there. I mean, there's, there's probably a lot. You can probably no, think yeah, of I'm sure lot. there are. I'm just having trouble pulling any out of the top you know, I keep head. thinking of them, and then I'm like, wait, but they already tried it and it didn't work out Yeah, well. there's like, a lot of situations like that. Like, Dark honestly, Souls. like, I almost consider Resident Evil 5 to be a little bit of a palette. Not a palette Souls. swap, but it is bright. Like, it is. A, I, it Souls, takes place in, Souls was the first thing I thought of. Dude, I mean... I feel like Souls would be they've good. Done a lot much. of they've done a lot of games the way that they have been doing them and that's really cool and they look beautiful in their own way but like could you imagine if they came out with a Souls type game that was just like 
a f- like fucking beautiful, like super bright and vibrant. Yeah, like the complete opposite. It's of like what they it's are like now. it's like it's like Dark Souls. Like it's like a Dark Souls style game, but it looks. But it has like a it completely looks like, different visual. Presentation. It looks like I don't know. Put, just pointing this out of my like ukulele style, yeah. like super it's colorful. Something Breath of the like, Wild. Cartoony. Something completely. Yeah, like the Breath Witness. Of the Wild. Yeah. I feel like yeah. uh, Metroid has always been a little too dark and serious. I wish it they did a new been. one with like little chibi Lego people. <laughs> Oh wait! Thanks, Brad. You killed it. All right. Uh, anyway, that's all the questions from uh, tonight. Thanks everybody who asked them. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't forget, every week we post a thread on the Patreon page. Any patron is welcome to go in there and ask any question they like. Yep. Uh, we don't always get to them. There's sometimes there's too many questions, or we spend too much time on other things. Uh, don't let that fret you. Don't let that don't scare let you. Don't let that scare you. Yeah. Away. Uh, always uh, welcome to ask questions again. Yep. Uh, thank you, Noel. And uh, a other note in the community, we are trying to put together a Rocket League community night tomorrow. Saturday night. Correct. Um, I don't know if that's going to happen. It might but... turn into Overwatch community night at the last minute. No, it won't. Okay. I will be casting Saturday night, it sounds like, regardless, whether we're doing a community night. If we don't get to do the community night Saturday night, maybe I can try and make it an early like afternoon community uh, event on Sunday or something. Um, but I would say keep your eyes on the calendar. Keep your eyes on our Twitter page. Um, or our Facebook page. I'm updating the face. By the way, I'm updating the Facebook page again. We're trying to reinvigorate that shit. So uh, we'll we'll make it aware whenever we decide to host this Rocket League. It'll be Rocket League Community Night, and you must use the four player community flag. Mm-hmm. That is the rule. Mm-hmm. Um, so, anyways, thank you, Nolan, for leading the community. Thank you guys for submitting your questions. Also, a quick reminder: if there's anything anything at all we discussed in the entirety of this podcast that you have a thought on, or you want to chime in on, or you want to just whatever. Post it in the comments for this exact episode on the, on the, the site at fourplayernetwork.com. Uh, create an account, or you can even leave a comment as a guest, whatever. Just drop it in there, uh, and we will address some of those comments at the start of our next podcast, which will be next Thursday, because like I said at the beginning of the show, going forward, episodes are going to be Thursday nights at 8 p.m. So uh, we will do Thursday. We will, we will. Please try to spread the word, please. Yes, we'll be reiterating that a lot uh, coming up. So I don't know why I keep turning blurry. The camera's... Getting all funny. Maybe you're having a stroke or something. <laughs> oh, you God. smell burnt toast? Nope. All right. So we're going to wrap up the show as we always do with the four player minutes. I'll go first. Brad's ready to go. My hype is for Inside, which comes out next week. I think Limbo was a terrific game. Definitely. And it's been a long fucking time since Limbo. And I can't wait. I've had, and I've heard great fucking things from the people who played it. Um,. Uh, my sweat, though, is the new Star Ocean. Star Ocean 5 comes out next week. Mm. I'm going to give it a shot because, you know, I don't think anyone else here is going to. So I'll bite that bullet. Maybe it's good. You know, I miss when Star Ocean used to be good. 4 was such a disaster that I didn't even play it. But um, I don't know. Hope Maybe it'll be all right. Maybe the combat at least will be fun. My uh, fuck you, my fuck you goes to Microsoft. I mean, there's I have a lot of fuck yous coming out of E3. But my biggest one goes to Microsoft, who didn't mention in the press conference or any official capacity. Came up in an interview with, uh, I don't know, like Jeff Keighley or something, um, where Phil Spencer, like, fucking squirted out, like, the of his asshole, his, this lie about Phantom Dust. By the way, Phantom Dust still exists. Um, did y'all catch this? Oh, yeah. We were yeah. standing okay, in line okay. for Sony when this Dude, happened. Dude, I was, like, um, responding to you on uh, Twitter when we were talking about uh, like they said, they didn't cancel Phantom Dust, but it's coming out as an HD remaster mm-hmm. for Xbox One and PC. And uh, it's going to be the original game with online play, which is what I predicted ages ago when I found out that they canceled this game, that they, but didn't officially say it was canceled, that they didn't weren't going to find another team or they weren't going to keep making it. They were, the best we can hope for is a re-release of the old game, which, you know what? In the end, is still really good news, but fuck you, Microsoft. I saw this coming, you lying pieces of shit. Oh, and my thank you <laughs> goes to Nolan for this sweet little Samus and Crispy who got me this sweet shirt. That was weird. <laughs> Uh, okay, come back, Brad. You can come back to the, ch- the couch now. Um, man, thank you, Brad, for your enthusiasm what? and showing us your shirt. No, hey, I, thumbs up. Huh? I think I think what Crispy is trying to say is you're welcome. Yep, you're welcome. 
Nolan. What's up? Hit us, hit us with your four-player minute. All right, my four-player minute starts now. My hype is for my new PC. Uh, I'm still fucking loving it. I'm, I'm, I'm glad that I can boot up a game now and not have to worry about anything. <laughs> I don't have to spend like ten minutes finicking with it and being like, oh, I can play it like this, but I have to, I have to change it when I stream and all this stuff. I'm, I'm, I'm really enjoying it now that I can actually play games the way that the developer meant them to be played. I guess you could say. Uh, but that kind of leads me into my sweat. And that there's a lot of games I didn't buy because they, they didn't one run great on my PC, like Fallout 4. I bought that on PS4 because my PC couldn't run it very well. But yeah. now my PC could run it great. And I'm like, fuck. I don't want to, like, I don't want to buy <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. Like, Play all your games on Xbox because then you'll be able to get them on. Uh, yeah, that's and, and that's the, that's the other good thing, and that's kind of one of the things I talked about during uh, E3 was I'm I'm glad that Xbox is introducing this new cross. Uh, what do they What do they call it? Cross. You know what they didn't mention? Xbox if it applies everywhere. for physical games, yeah, Xbox or just digital. I bet it's gonna be just digital. And that's fine. I'll buy them digital on my PC and then be able to boot them up on my Xbox One. No, you have to buy the Xbox version. Really? Oh, that's what you're saying. They're and then you say, get the Windows 10. Version. What he's trying to say is it's going to be something ski. It doesn't matter. It and they probably will be. We'll see what happens. It's always an asterisk. Uh, and my my fuck you, and I don't want to. I'm not saying this in like a, uh, like to, I don't want to say give it to NT Creates, but I mean just like everything that's happened with Mighty Number no. Nine, like it's ridiculous. And you know I was kind of trying to give them the benefit of the doubt the whole time. That, you know, there's issues, and I understand that. And like Brad was saying earlier, we just don't normally see these issues. The skeeviest thing in that whole situation, though, was them launching the Red Ash Kickstarter. Yeah. They, they, launched, the kick, what, they launched Kickstarter for a game before they even before finished they the one they were this on. Game, yeah. Which the reality is, like, like other video game companies do that as well, well they because de- they no, have they to think about the future yeah, they before do, it actually yeah. happens. You know, well, they, it's, it's one of those situations where you've done 80% of the work. You don't yeah. need every, you don't need a hundred percent of your staff working yeah. on the rest of the game. You, and so, I mean, I like, I understand, I understand how the industry works. It's just kind of like one of those things where we were promised something and I don't think we got what we were promised. And I don't know. That's just kind of whatever. And then my thank you is going to go to not, uh, not, 947 the mix mix 947 whatever that radio station is uh, in in town that uh, that let me know about the blood drive today where I donated blood and I was able to get the free pint of blue bell and an Alamo draft house ticket Nolan what's up you should tear that ticket up why and throw that pint away you probably already ate it no I didn't no, I got wait. it this morning I, I ate it immediately yeah they didn't give me ice cream they gave me a voucher for oh, a free pint of ice cream you should tear it up because you did it out of the goodness of your heart and you don't want or need that. Story. The funny thing is, is like whenever I go give blood, they're always like, okay, and filling out. And they're like, do you know your blood type? And I'm like, oh, negative. And they're like, oh, really? Like, because O negative is like the universal donor. What if, you have to ha- what if you have to be O negative to get the ice cream? Oh, I thought you were like, I thought, oh, and oh. No, not like that. Oh, and then like, they? And then like every time they go to draw my blood, they're like, oh, you have really nice veins. And I'm like, all right, calm down, guys. Yeah, that's, okay. That's so it's ghoulish. Like, like I don't have to do anything and you can just like see my vein there. And then every time, like anytime like I have like student, like student like nurses and stuff, they're like, oh, thank God. Like they're like, this one's easy. How many, how many vials did you have to? I mean, a, a pint. I mean, it wasn't oh, a, pint. a pint of blood. Yeah, I guess you're right. Yeah. I've was, never actually given blood before. Really? I'm just you fucking horrible person. I'm a terrible person. It's not because I don't want to. Wait, I what's just... your blood type? You would ask me this, no one, in front of all these people. I don't even know what my blood type is right now. Horrible. I've, I don't. <laughs> I've, I don't know what my blood type is, guys. That's fine. I just embarrass myself. You're probably lucky. A B negative. They're O R scrubs. O oh, are oh, they? Uh, Thanks. <laughs> Thanks. Um, uh, Rush fair. Rushmore. I can think of the name of it. Max Fisher. Yeah. All right, all right. Crispy. Crispy. Okay, Yo. my hype is seriously, like, seriously, guys, is actually oh, negative. for No Man's Sky. Oh, that's a positive. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. No Man's Sky? Yeah, it doesn't matter. I mean, come on. I my... interrupted the same shit you've been saying for years. Okay. Months? <laughs> years. It's true now, though. Like we're get we're getting there. I thought everyone ha- like th- that guy was getting like death threats or some shit. Yeah, because yeah. he delayed his he video delayed game. The game because yeah. that's that's what that's what rational people do. Right, yeah. right. When shit like that don't happens, don't lump me in with those people. <laughs> don't lump Don't lump you in with rational people. Bra- <laughs> yeah, those <laughs> rationalists. Maybe he deserved a- it. <laughs> 
my 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 sweat fuck sweat bank. is actually another hype. Yeah, I didn't think of a sweat. I'm not sweating anything. What about Brexit? Oh yeah! Wow. <laughs> well, what does that mean for? We almost made it through the entire show. For <laughs> that's my fuck you because they did the this. European they did this movement. after I went to Europe. Back when the fucking pound was so much higher right, than the dollar right. that I I was just like like the trans the 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 rate that was horrible for me. But now if you go there, it's like great. Now's a great time to take a trip to Britain. <laughs> that's true. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you're white. I guess. <laughs> what the fuck does that mean? <laughs> isn't there like a big? Is it, isn't the whole Brexit thing? Aren't they oh, saying I it's don't like know. a big racist. I don't know motivation. Dude, when I was there's, there's like laying a lot of things. When I was there, like <laughs> no one was racist. Is, well, but there's the, so but much the whole, better than but America. The whole like drive behind Brexit was to close the borders, wasn't it? Well, that's not for race. That's for immigration. Okay. 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 I don't. Let's, I don't think they not, want. They don't, don't want. To, they don't want white immigrants we either. To, we don't need to unpack this <laughs> right now. <laughs> abort, uh, I, abort. I'm excited that I'm going to be playing Xbox One games for the first time since I got the Xbox One. Uh, and then also my my <laughs> fuck. Instead of a thank you, I'm going to do an I'm sorry, and I want to say I'm sorry to everybody I just offended <laughs> and. To everybody who backed Mighty Number no. Nine, I mean, I'm sure some people who backed it are out there enjoying it, and that's great. But to all the many of you who aren't, I'm sorry. I was excited too when they announced it, but I didn't back it. Hey, because I'm cheap. Hey, don't like Mighty Number no. Nine? There's a new. They just announced a new Shovel Knight characters coming soon. Yep, they did. That's as good as you're gonna get with classic Mega Man these days. So cool. And then uh, my fuck you for the week goes to Drake from Advance Wars because fuck that guy. This is the only mission that I've had to run like five times. Like I can't, I can't, I can't crack him. He keeps can't doing that out. shitty dance. He keeps doing yeah. that shit. Like he's waggling his fucking belly button at me. <laughs> uh, I don't even know. I don't even want context for that statement. All right. That's cool. uh, if you need tips, just ask. All just right. the tips. My four-player minute this week is brought to you, of course, by Jason Bourne, which is getting ever so close. I'm so excited. Was well, like less than a I'm, month, I'm right? getting. I'm actually at that point where I'm checking the Alamo Draft House ticket sales every day. What's the date? July 29th. It's, it's usually like 30 the t- days. They're before. not on sale yet. No, I'm checking it every day. As soon as they're as soon as they're up, it's, I'm buying it's five tickets. Like a month. Five. Um, yeah. So uh, what if I my, get them before you? We can bring more people. <laughs> Only real question is, are they going to do a special edition pint glass? If they do, I'll buy like 10 of them. All right, my hype, my real hype this week is... Am I invited to yeah, see more? Mm, no. Well, you know, are you going to ruin my <laughs> experience? Yes, you're invited. Why? I actually really like the Bourne movies. More, well, prob- top, more than probably the average person. Sweet. Um, I didn't watch the last one with Hawkeye, though. That's fine. You didn't. That, that's, that's fine. Okay, anyways, my hype, <laughs> my hype is my laundry list, actually, because... Um, I don't, there's not like a, I mean I, I do want to play inside He's but there's not really a lot coming out for me for the next month and a half or so until August yeah actually. there's not yeah. Um, Ooh, so I have time to finish Quantum Break I have time to finish Mirror's Edge 2 I have time to play more Dark Souls 2 I can even go back I'm even thinking about going back and playing South Park finally dude do I've it I've never touched Wait, did you? Oh, yeah. I'm thinking about playing Beyond Two Souls what what, what? what? really I mean yeah. None of us ever really got far enough in that game to form an no, opinion we did. about that's, it. No, we did. That's very much true. Yeah. Um, so yeah, th- this is a this is one of those perfect opportunities to go back and just play a lot of shit that I haven't had time to finish yet. Um, my sweat, also movie related. Not, I'm getting a little concerned about Ghostbusters, and not because of the, all the stupid bullshit controversy about the cast. It's actually because of the th- they just released the theme song for the movie. And if anyone oh, here is listening to it, is actually in now, the movie? Le- you think? Probably. Let me just say this: I do, I do not make it a habit to judge people's taste in music. Mm-hmm. I have listened to my fair share of Fall Out Boy over the years, mm-hmm. but this song is basically a recreation of the Ray Parker Jr. original Ghostbusters song that he by, by, <laughs> by Fall Out Boy featuring Missy Elliott, and it is a god. Damn clusterfuck. Yeah. I always thought that Tom Waits would do a good Ghostbusters rendition. I guess. Like, like when I hear the the original Ghostbusters song play, like, it triggers something in my brain. Like, good feelings. Like, yeah. I get excited. Yeah. This rendition of it... It's called Nostalgia. ...does the exact opposite. 
And I'm not. I am not even opposed. I'm not even opposed to the idea of recreating songs or trying to tap into nostalgia. But like, this seems like they just completely missed. It's the been market. done well before. I feel like they picked the wrong artist. I feel like mm. there's a little too many wubs in it. Just because Missy Elliott's black. Well, I mean, I was <laughs> Ray Parker Jr. I know. Okay. <laughs> Uh, so yeah, I'm just getting a little concerned because it's because Missy Elliott's a woman. <laughs> no, <laughs> but she is a woman. Wait, Fuck all you, of you. You realize all the cast in this movie is women, right? Every single one of them. Well, this uh, all makes sense. The song sucks. The cast sucks. No, nice. d- don't 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 go lumping me in with those fucking people. It's the I am excited to watch this movie. Oh I wait, am, wait, are they even getting paychecks? They're getting 70 60% cents to the dollar. They're all making 60% what Chris Hemsworth is making. <laughs> oh, God. And Nick, right. I just wanted to call this is out. getting strangely cause political. Cause you, you weren't saying you were excited. That's not politics. That's <laughs> yes. for, for <laughs> hum- humanity. Why? Hold on. In Whatever. July, uh, Necropolis, which is the, the, the Souls-like yeah. game. Yeah. Uh, isn't that like, isn't that, um, isn't, no. isn't Necropolis uh, also, uh, hold on. Uh, procedurally generated. Yes, it is. I th- it's I, a, I tend to have bad experiences with eh, procedurally uh, generated. Uh, happy few. Song of the Deep. Uh, Song of the Deep. Yeah. I don't, I'm not yeah. super excited and, about that. Uh, I mean, and yeah. I am Setsuna. Are three games that are coming no, out. No, 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 those played three. That's I played most likely. Oh, is it good? Uh, I talked about it on the podcast. Did you not listen? Maybe I did. Which day? I don't remember. Maybe I missed it. The, 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 my biggest thing with that was I couldn't find anybody who repped the game because mm. I was curious as to why half of the songs were just straight up Final Fantasy songs. Yeah. Well, like, I know it's Square. Anyway, that's besides the point. Anyway. Anyways, I'm not done with my four player minute yet. My thank you actually goes to Ed. You know Ed. Who? Ed. Who? He, he, Ed. The horse? Who? No, our Ed. A horse is Ed a horse. Ed has been, horse, once again, has been, I mean, he always helped me with the website and whatnot, yeah. but he has been instrumental again in helping me get this website ready because if you've been to the site recently you've noticed that it's made a huge change and he has been instrumental in making a lot of that back-end magic happen I, like because i work on front-end stuff he works on back-end stuff it's a pretty great Just tag team that's a pretty great tag team like we 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 have you know we I work pretty well that site. it turns out pretty well i'm uh, we're, we're very lucky to have him with us and thank you Ed for helping mm, me. Sorry, it turns out he's gonna go you, make Ed? a video game now. Considering, I, yeah. <laughs> oh my god, <laughs> he's taking Chris Davis with him too. So. Oh man, <laughs> that's a low blow. <laughs> Love you, Bob. Fuck Bob. No, Love I'm just kidding. <laughs> By the way, also, uh, it was delightful to be able to spend some time with Bob. It in was. LA. I so missed him. Thank you. Uh, thank you also. Hashtag to- Ed Pacman sign Bob. Let's start it. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you also to Bob for spending time with us in Los Angeles for not only was was E three a great year I mean I'm sorry Brad you didn't get to go but you know I thought it was a shitty we year. had we had I'm a, glad I didn't we had a nice big team there we had we had we had Chai Thank you for putting us up for the week as well There's so, so many cool. thank yous to go around Chai is always a f- fantastic gracious host Bob was it was great spending t- some quality time with Bob and you know seeing. How far uh, Refactor has come, that's also exciting. Thank you to Ed for helping me get the website ready in time for E3. Thank you all around. Um, and my fuck you of the week goes to Microsoft. Yeah, fuck um, you. Because, I, and I said this before, like I waited in line to play Zelda for about an hour, hour and a half, somewhere in there. It actually wasn't too bad. The line was very, very, very long, but moved and was paced. And yeah. it was ta- like they were on point. Like they had that system down. It was great. I waited in line behind two people. To, at the Microsoft booth to play um, We Happy Few, and it was the most dreadful line experience I did hear of my that entire part of E3. Podcast. It was horrible. And, like, I just look around the Microsoft booth, and I'm thinking, they actually had a really good showing. They had a lot of stuff to play, a lot of variety they, they, to play. Their organization was poor. But their booth they, is dude, garbage. They, they, they always take up, like, half the fucking booth was, to put a giant fucking Ferrari in the middle of it. Yeah. Take the Ferrari out. It free was, up some space for the lines. It's a clusterfuck. It was in that the same booth. fucking story with uh, Bloodstain too. Yeah, but real that's because that's the same aisle where they had We Happy Few. It's the yeah, same it thing. It, it's it's a dreadful like. They're... But then I went over to the Ghostbusters game. Nobody around. Just picked up you the know, controller, started playing. <laughs> nice. You know, I would in that regard. I w- I would say thank you to Sony for putting out that app. I think that was a great fucking way, even though not everyone was able to use it properly. It was kind of I, a clusterfuck, but it was a good idea. It was a good idea. It could have been implemented better. 
But like I was able to at 10 a.m. I booked an appointment for Horizon and then I showed up like 10 minutes before and I got in and I got to, I didn't have to wait. And I think that was a great idea. I think I, I, I hope they continue that, but I hope they make it a little bit smoother next year. Yeah. Um, point is, you know, Microsoft had a great showing. Like they had a lot of stuff to play in their booth. In fact, more than my, more than Sony, I think. Their booth sucks. Though. But their booth is such a clusterfuck. Yeah. Fix that shit. It um, has the softest carpet. The no, but it's yeah. terrible because you're walking around and all of a sudden it's like... Right, the, and then once you leave the booth, like I was in that booth for like an hour, two hours one day, and then I left. Hard too, I, hit, I, hit the, I hit the aisle floor and I was like, ah! ah! Like screaming with every step. It was pain. You notice it's always hot too? Dude. I fucking hate that It's booth. like 10 wow. degrees hotter in that booth versus yeah. outside the, of the booth. It's all the lighting in the um, jumbotron. Yeah, no shit. So anyways, that's all we have for you this week, guys. Thank you so much for listening slash watching. Um, of course, as I've said it many times tonight, fourplayernetwork.com. Check it out. Make an account. Leave comments. We appreciate it. We'll address all those things in the, at the start of the next show. Brad, Nolan, Crispy, thank you, of course, for being here. Chris mm. Davis, thank you for uh, playing footage and talking to people and all that good shit. Uh, and uh, I'm just in a really thankful mood right now. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, feeling good. Anyways, well. so that's all we have. That's the end of the show. Thanks for listening, guys. Bye. Bye. No Come one's on, unzipping guys. his pants. What? <laughs> we said you were thankful. That's where it, that's where it's ending. I'm just gonna go. Bye.